Auburn Football Review with head coach Doug Barfield is brought to you by South Central Bell. Welcome to the new Auburn Football Review, our new half-hour format this year. And Coach, I think you have something to say about that. Well, I sure do, Phil. I'd like to offer my personal thanks to South Central Bell for going along with us on this thing and, and really supporting us and, and giving us uh, all the backing that we needed. And uh, lucky for me for handling this thing and WSFA for really putting it all together. And I, I really appreciate it. And, uh, and we're very thankful to all those folks. All right, let's talk football. 26-18, 26, 18, uh, 20, 26, 18, 18, 18 right. victory <laughs> over the Kansas State Wildcats yesterday. Jordan Hare, great crowd. A W is a W is a W, I heard you say. Well, that's right. Well, I, I'm proud of our players for, for winning. Uh, I think they want to win, and I, I heard some of them say no matter what happens, you know, uh, we're going to win. And, and I think they felt like that. I want to say one other, uh, give one other thanks, too, uh, to our students that weren't even in school. I thought we had a great crowd of students and great enthusiasm from them on the other side, and we do appreciate that. I remember there in the, when it was pretty tight, and they got up down there with Auburn uh, down on the goal line trying to hold them down there, and they did. They and came alive. we got to coach them a little better about when to do that and when <laughs> not to do that, but we appreciate their support. It was quite a day. 26-18 victory for Auburn, an opening game win, 50,100 at the... Uh, Jordan Hare Stadium, and as you can see, a lot of progress being made with the upper deck up there. Didn't impede anybody from getting in the stadium. It was a big day. A crowd much larger than anticipated. A good way to begin the season. Auburn won the toss. They took the ball, and here will come Mr. James Brooks out from the 30-yard line. Kickoff return spectacular yesterday. I know you want to talk some more about that later, and we'll have some film to illustrate that point. I sure do, Phil. Those guys are dangerous, and there's a lot of hidden yardage with James and Joe. James Brooks gets the first call with his teammate Joe Cribbs in the same backfield. I think that's one of the reasons that quite a few thousand folks were on hand. They wanted to see those well, two. I hope so, together. and I hope we can uh, come along on that thing and really get them uh, uh, both where they can get that ball in, in better scoring position. Second and one, good passing situation here after a five-yard penalty to Kansas State, and so Trotman is throwing. He, he's a bit overthrown there. Uh, to Rusty Burke. Just a little bit. Charlie was a little bit off. That play was uh, good for us all day, and uh, Charlie could have run the football. Here's Brooks running for the four yards for the first town. Free safety Brad Horsham, a real football player, made the stop there. Number 20, Joe Cribbs, will get the call now. That's a familiar sight. We're close to breaking that play. We're not where we, we want to on it, but uh, that's got to be a good series for us with those two in there. Here's the uh, pitch to James Brooks, and he is hit on a good play there by number 71 for a loss. Now that brings up a passing situation, third and four at the 49. Kansas State will be blitzing their linebacker, and their end gets there. Well, we didn't give Charlie much protection. We didn't pick up the blitz. Kansas State changed the defense on us, and something we hadn't prepared for, and uh, came at us a whole lot, and I don't blame him for doing it. It was a good plan. Okay, Auburn punts to the 16-yard line. This is Kansas State on their first series. They want uh, to establish that running game. That's Roosevelt Duncan, that uh, bowling ball type of uh, fullback they have. Duncan again. Kansas State has some fine running backs, four of them to be exact, and uh, great receivers. And when you come in the game and a quarterback was capable of getting the ball to them, they ran a lot of draws and a lot of screens and uh, delays, this type of thing, and uh, they give you some problems with it. Pass interception coming now. First key play of the ball game. Sheldon to throw. Pulls it down. Now he's going to go long. James McKinney will come up with it. That was a great play by James McKinney. Bob Harris was hurt on that play. Our people reacted to the sudden change real well. We've got a block above the waist. They did. Now we got to the near sideline, and we're in good field position. On the turnover, you need to cash it quick, and you can't cash it any quicker than this. Now watch the touchdown play coming from the 30-yard line. Charles Trotman, the senior quarterback. Well, that's a great individual effort. Uh, there's also a great effort by Rusty Bird to get down there to throw that block right there. And Charlie just uh, reminded us of the Georgia game last year when he made that great run. He, he was reading the option, and uh, Cribbs was tackled by the tackle. And Charlie kept the ball. He in took the pitch. You got some people hustling downfield there trying to block. He said Rusty Bird made one block at the line of scrimmage, got up and hustled down right there to get in front of Charlie. 
and help him get in the end zone. Reminiscent of Bird's block for James Brooks in the Kansas State game last year. And that's exactly right. So that's a great effort. Point after a good, 9.43 left in the first quarter, 7-0. Kansas State drove, then missed a 37-yard field goal. Trotman rolling right here, hooking up with a sure-handed Mark Robbins, a 24-yard completion. Mark Robbins looked like he was about 10 feet in the air then on that play. Now Trotman going for the touchdown, and you're going to see a great individual effort here by Frank Schuster, the cornerback, to intercept in the end zone and stop uh, a promising Auburn drive right there. The rest of the half, neither team could get anything going. It was Auburn 7, Kansas State nothing at the half. Now, we'd like to show you in quick sequence some of the outstanding kick coverage Auburn displayed during the rest of the afternoon. Wouldn't you say, Coach, this is one of the great factors in the victory? Well, I think it was. I'd like to give Coach Paul Davis a lot of credit. He handles our kicking game and is in charge of all phases of it. And, you know, we worked hard on it. We covered well. We kicked well. We protected pretty well. That's a kickoff return. Kickoff coverage. I don't think they ever got outside of 20. Well, we missed a the tackle there, but uh, we got a lot of blue shirts around him. We got to break down a little bit uh, quicker there and be alert. Here comes Eugene Goodlow, their uh, best uh, pass catcher running great with the ball. Great receiver, it? great speed. Great Here's punt a there. great punt here by Skip. Great coverage there. I'm not sure who that was first down there. It might have been Skutak or, or Grisham. Here's Goodlow again. Oops. Kicked the ball well. Great tackle. I believe that was Ricky Westbrook, Westbrook and Skutak there. Here's another. This is Lieb, their other wide receiver. Oh. My, hello there. Good gracious. That's 58. That's Ricky Westbrook. What we like to see on those coverage teams. Had some enthusiasm there. So outstanding punt and kick coverage, and really, Coach, you had to be happy with the entire kicking game yesterday. Was well, I was pleased with it because it was a major concern of ours uh, going into the game that we hadn't had enough time really to, to perfect it like we wanted to, and uh, we, we performed well on the kicking game. I think that was the difference in the football game. We'll return in just a minute after this word from our sponsor. Commercial error, Coach. Good job. Well, that's, uh, I'm not very experienced at that, and, uh, <laughs> but uh, I was pleased with the way they handled it. You know, halftime was uh, was pretty important for us yesterday. Felt like we had to make some adjustments, especially on offense, a lot of them on defense because of all their formations and various plays that they gave us. Offensively, we had to adjust uh, to the defense they were playing and narrow our offense down and decide on a few things that we could make go and just try to get out there and execute them. I thought our coaches... Uh, uh, did a good job uh, doing that, and, and our players responded to that, and we got a little stronger as we went along. I think that was the key to the game. Another factor, Auburn handled adversity there in the third quarter when they got behind, and then they had a touchdown call back, and yet they were still able to keep their poise. Well, I, I was pleased with our poise. I don't like our players ever thought uh, that we were going to lose a football game. Okay, let's get into the... Do a great job there, credit to it. And the new guy, that's a uh, young Auburn Tiger and the new character on the Auburn the Tiger. How about that? Have you met him? <laughs> Third quarter now. Auburn leading 7-0. Kansas State quarterback Sheldon Paris comes out throwing, and he had a torrid stretch of throwing the ball right through here. I think he hit 8 of 9. Bill, we, we seem to have a lapse on defense here. Nobody tackle. We're, we're feeling our way. We're cautious. We're grabbing. We're... Missed a lot of tackles there, and, and the guy goes for a long run. And I, I think we, we went out there and thought we'd throw our hats out on the field and, and stop them. The quarterback here does a great job reading our blitz. We're putting our head down and not tackling. 13-yard gain to the 13-yard line, a 17-yard gain, by the way. And so they have it at the 13 and uh, driving and looking very good. Uh, Edmund Nelson getting inside there along with his buddies there to stop Duncan going inside. But here comes the touchdown play now. The tight end is a 6'3", 230-pound guy, a big, strong guy who can catch the ball, as you can see right here. Well, we had some people around there, and we just didn't get the, get the football. He got right between our corner and our safety. The quarterback hung the ball up there. Here's another example of our kicking game. That's Zach Hardy, rushing the passer. That wouldn't have been complete anyway if it caught Well, they had Lyman downfield. I wasn't sure how the penalty would be assessed there, but of course we had to decline the penalty. We didn't get it on the kickoff either. So Auburn retains the lead 7-6 now. This is uh, their next series. Joe Cribb running inside for a couple. Second down at 8 at the 32 now. 
Joe Cribb running from the fullback spot now and making a good inside run really there. Close to breaking that play right there. We were trying to take advantage of their defense was stunning. They were doing on the strong side. A couple of plays later. Felt like we had to do this too. They were giving us out over there. We should have thrown it more and taken it a little bit more. Great to see Byron Franklin making some big catches yesterday along with Rusty Bird There's and Mark Roberts. Blitz. Charlie doing a good job. There's another out over there. We, if we just be content, not get uh, too impatient and take what they give us, our offense will get better. Okay. Now, Auburn could not move, and they asked George Patella to come in and kick a 48-yard field goal and watch it sail through. It was a big field goal. I was real pleased with George's kicking. I thought he kicked it out real well. He hit the ball real well, and that was important because we came right back after their drive their touchdown drive you got some points that that helped out you know uh, great for the morale anyhow the, uh, the coach <laughs> Kansas State uh, they just didn't let up though they came right back here and uh, drove right back down the field again our defense is still kind of sluggish we're not playing as aggressive as we need to I think. this is Keith Deering their freshman running back Zach Hardy and a couple other guys making the stop there first and ten at the 36 now Roosevelt Duncan Little fullback, little I say. He's just five nine, but he's two hundred. <laughs> yeah, he's not a bad football player. I tell you that. Several. We're we're doing a lot of grabbing. We're not really, we're not really getting our our helmet shoulder pads in the middle middle of folks. Freddie Smith measured the uh, swing pass there and made a big play. Freddie made several of those tackles. Number thirty one. A couple of years ago. I began to notice him quite a bit. People have asked about him. Here they they pick up our blitz again. And, we, I thought we were going to let the guy run for a touchdown. That freshman runs about a 4-4, I understand. And the way we arm tackle there, I thought he was going to run out of the end of the state. Our, our coaches responded to that real well, though, because we faked that blitz later on, and, and Bader's been throwing that ball, and, and we intercepted it. Two here, that's uh, Goodlow on the reception going out of bounds. We've got no pressure, no containment on the passer. He's just uh, doing about what he wants to do out there. That was, a, that was a good play right there by number 74, Marshall Riley. Number 60, Harris Raven. This will be Deering running, trying to run for the first down, and they are stopped on third down. But fourth down and eight coming up, and you're going to see another great this individual play. Big, big play, and uh, their athletes uh, executed it. We got them right where we want them, got some pressure on the passer. Got a guy there, but we just didn't go for the football. The big tight end again. The tight end Whitley is supposed to be one of the best in the country. They, they think he is anyhow. So, Kansas State has come back to take the lead for the first time of the day, 12 to 10. They are going to miss the point after and uh, retain that 12 to 10 advantage. Early in the fourth quarter now, Auburn appears to get the break it needs right here this on this interception. This is the play I was speaking of. Uh, I think this is the greatest play of the day. And it's unfortunate that it was called back. Let's see the replay There's a again. rush on the passer right there. And we had, as I said, baited him. We rushed the end and dropped our linebacker. And Fred intercepted it and was determined to get in the end zone. This is a great run. I'm sure, we'll get some more letters uh, about him at running back. But we, <laughs> we need him at linebacker. That's a great play by, by a great player. He's back in form. Now, the play was called back. They got a 15-yard penalty for uh, a late hit, and they have 15 yards up the field. Auburn does not have that touchdown they need so bad. But the defense comes right back and puts the helmets on and stops them. The penalty field was, uh, they're calling a little bit different on the roughing the passer this year. It's just like roughing the punter. It's an automatic first down, and uh, he's no longer uh, game there after he releases the football and our player was committed and just went on and I think made the tackle on it. In this series that seemed to insist incense the Auburn defense and they held I mean they held it's fourth down and 17 now and this is a key play coming right great here. play here by by Joe Cribb a great run and I think he could have gotten his acceleration right there he was he was gone he said he was gonna turn one we worked hard on that and it was the middle return and just a great effort by Joe pretty good execution Look at this play. Look at Byron Franklin leg it by Horsham and get in the end zone. Tell us about this play, Coach, while we see the replay. Well, I'd give Charlie Trotman all the credit in the world because we lined up in our 
pro set with two wide outs, nobody covered Byron Franklin. We had a running play call with a, on first sound, and Charlie saw Byron and just took the ball and threw it out there to him. We got a touchdown. It was an alert play by a veteran quarterback and a great catch by a fine receiver. Two-point play coming here. These two-point plays are going to figure to be very important. Great catch there for two. Well, we, you know, if you bet 500 on those two-point plays, you're doing a good job. And we're two for two, so we better... You better remember that. But it was good execution on Charlie's and Mark Robbins' part. So Auburn is up 18 to 12 now, early in the fourth quarter. Auburn's planned substitution at this point, I thought, Coach, seemed to be paying off because they, they were getting a little tired. Well, we, we had some fresh people, I think, especially on offense. We played a lot of people, and uh, hopefully that helps in the fourth quarter. There's a, a caused a, a fumble there and a fumble recovery, and we go right to work with. Looked like we were going to go ahead and solve things away here. Big chance for the Tigers. Now George Peoples is in the ball game, the sophomore running back. Horsham makes the stop there. Now it's third down and three, and Auburn hasn't cashed a couple of third down plays. Now watch Trotman since he can make that first down, and he just cuts it up and gets it. That was a triple option again. Just, we caught him in a, another one of their stunts, and Charlie handled it real well. Watch this catch by Rusty Here's Bird. A roll pass, a good throw, and a good catch. We're down there in scoring position. Power eye now. Here's the guy who scored 16 times last year. I think he knows how to get in the end zone. He knows how to get in the end zone. And good blocking. Man. And we get that ball that close, we've got to light up and fire up and be determined to score, not make mistakes. Another two-point conversion here. We thought uh, James may have flipped this ball in the end zone, but I think it was knocked loose from him. In the end zone. Well, uh, I, I think James was, was in the end zone really before the fumble, but he wasn't sure. And, uh, we try to do a little coaching there. If on fourth down or a two-point play, we we want the ball in the end zone somehow. Well, he we did by, flip it in the end zone. I, I'm not sure about that. We won't. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to lose, huh? Mike Blanchard and I ain't quarterback. We turned somebody loose on the passer there. He threw it away. You were hoping here to get the second unit offense to run some time off the clock. And uh, well, we, we've got a fine play there. And, we're not tucking that football away. George is handling a little loosely, and the guy just reached out and grabbed the ball and, and caused the fumble. Put us in pretty bad position. They come right back and throw this pass. And there's freshman Willie Howell back there, and uh, Willie went up, had the interception, missed it. He threw it right into two of our players, and that's one of those things that'll happen sometimes. So on the tip pass, good fortune for them, but a good play by Eugene Goodlow. They get within seven now. Those two-point conversions are looking good at this point. They get the ball back with two and a half to go and watch this play to end the drive. That's Ken Luke from Mobile, Alabama. Ken's uh, switched over from quarterback to safety and it was a mighty big play uh, by Ken there to save the ball game. Of course, they could have only tied, but uh, nevertheless, we missed a score down there early and that could have made the difference. But it's a good play and uh, we kept our poise and we kept coming on. And, this football team has got to improve. We're going to improve, I believe, because they're willing to work. That's right. I did say they, they were eight behind. The best they could do was tie, and that's the value of those two-point well, conversions. That's right. Really. That's right. The kicking game again, a two-point conversion. So it's a 26-18 opening victory for the Auburn Tigers. We'll return in just a minute. Our university feature today deals with the uh, research going on in the field of psychology at Auburn University. Auburn, uh, Carl Velker, and uh, some of the folks over there have put together a little thing that I think you'll enjoy. Picture day, Auburn University. But unfortunately, Southern Miss has a good football team. Southern yeah. Miss does. I'll tell you what, they had Florida State beaten in the fourth quarter and got a kick block and one returned, and uh, the kicking game showed up again. They, they just dominated Cincinnati last week. There was no contest at all. I'm sure they were getting ready for us. Let's talk more about that. We have some tape of that in just a minute after this word from our sponsor. Southern Miss next week, jerking game. They will not uh, sneak up on many people because it is well known that Southern Miss is a good football team. The Auburn Football Review with head coach Doug Barfield is brought to you by South Central Bell.
Welcome to the Auburn Football Review. Good day on the Plains yesterday. Auburn defeated Southern Miss 31-9. to Coach Southern Miss, one of those teams, uh, historically has been hard to get uh, ready to play because they're good and it's difficult to convince everybody, I'm sure the alumni, that they're good. Well, our, our players too, particularly, I think. But I think uh, that's a tribute to how far they've come in their program and improvements they've made that uh, our players were serious, our coaches were. And, and I want to say this right now, that I, I think our assistant coaches did a tremendous job last week in preparing our football team for Southern Mississippi. They were intense, they were sincere, and they worked hard, and, and I think our players responded to that. There were some great defensive plays, intercepted pass, a lot of sacks of the quarterback. Coach, uh, what kind of progress did your defense make this week? I thought we made a lot of improvement. We've still got a long way to go. There's no question about that. We rushed the passer better. It was a different type passing attack, a sprint out attack. We had to contain and we had to put pressure on at the same time. Their quarterback was dangerous. Uh, I thought we did this uh, fairly well and, and of course we got to him several times so that helped us a lot. We're uh, getting on a little early today for a purpose, uh, trying to get through so Coach Barfield can attend the funeral of Donnie Gibbons, the Auburn linebacker of last year who was killed in a car accident uh, Thursday of, of last week. Thursday night, Phil. We were very shocked and saddened and want to extend our sympathies to Donnie's family. Uh, we, we just all were, uh, we were sick about the thing, and he meant a lot to us, uh, to our football team, to Auburn, and he was the kind of guy that was such a fierce competitor and uh, that everybody liked him and, and respected him and one of our last year's captains. And a uh, winner of two different defensive awards for his outstanding play last year. I'd like to add my sympathies to the family. And we'll return with the first half of play in just a moment. 45,000 fans on a cool, cloudy Saturday as those Auburns take the field. Kind of touch of fall in the air, Coach. Sure was, Phil. It was a little cool and uh, crisp. I think our, our players appreciated that uh, in view of that hot weather we've been having. And, and they played well and were pretty frisky and I thought fresh uh, toward the end of the football game. Neither team could move on the first series, but Southern came out wanting to throw the football and it's going to backfire on them after this play. They try it uh, down the sidelines almost in the I think they want to take advantage of a couple of our bruised up guys in the secondary. And uh, I believe this is a play uh, coming here that there's good pressure on the passer through the out cut and the receiver slipped down. Jerry Beasley from Montgomery Stepped in front of the receiver. There's a key block by Marshall Riley to get him in the end zone. Just a great play. There's more ways to score on defense, you know, than there is on offense. Three play coming. Uh, Jerry, one of the close friends of Donnie Gibbons, and I'm sure he was happy to be able to play as well as he did yesterday. Tremendous uh, play. That kind of got set the momentum and the tone, I think, for the rest of the football game for us. Southern Miss uh, started a long drive late in the first quarter and opening the, the second period, too. That's it was a big, Sammy big Winder. play. Uh, we had uh, Frank Warren and Edmund Nelson cause the fumble there, and uh, Frank Warren recovered it. Frank had a, a real fine game. After that, uh, Joe Cribbs is running to the right side now, getting about six on the play. Well, that was the inside veer, and our offensive line, I don't know where you noticed that, they're coming off the ball uh, a lot better and. Uh, Sustaining their blocks. There's Trotman running the option again. He pulled the ball and got out on the corner. They're trying to take our pitch away. Yes, they feel like we have a couple of dangerous guys. Trotman going for Byron Franklin, slightly overthrown, but they'll hook up later. Well, Byron had his defender beaten and, uh, on the play action pass, and Charlie threw the ball well, but just a little out of reach. Comes Trotman again on the option. He turned out to be the uh, number one ground gainer of the day with 95 yards. Uh, they apparently wanted uh, Trotman to keep the ball some, Coach. Offsides gets them a first down there. That's a good break. Well, our center, uh, Bishop Reeves, young, uh, young center from Auburn, uh, is trained when they jump offsides to, to snap the football. There's our old uh, great play of last year, the isolation play. We felt like uh, Southern Miss was defending our, our flanks and our out corners real well so we changed our offense up a little bit and decided we had to run at them to get something established and this was a good drive early in the game. Chester Willis in for that up back position and doing Ooh, the blocking. I'll tell you time. what they turned him around those two linebackers uh, Lewis and Taylor were real fine football players. Faking the pass and uh, out to Cribs and he gets running room down to the 22 yard line. We had the pass call in, and of course Charlie's uh, option is if the 
Receivers covered. He pulls it down and runs with the football. Only the pitcher keep. Okay, we're getting down close now. Trotman on the option. Charlie broke a couple tackles there. Sure I didn't did. know he was that uh, that strong. He got hit pretty well. Here comes a big play now at the 15-yard line. Watch Joe Cribbs do what he does so well, slicing inside there. Two tight end offense in the power eye now on third and goal as they get it inside and up and over goes There's Joe Cribbs for Joe the touchdown. Joe diving over for the score. He does that real well. It was good blocking by James Brooks and Chester Willis on that side and the right side of our offensive line. Here he comes, up and over. We've got some stalemates there. We've got some penetration right there. Southern Miss would hit you. There's no question about that. They were a real physical football team. What's called giving up your body, Coach. 14-0, <laughs> second quarter. Auburn out to a quick lead. After a good kickoff return, Southern Miss has it at their 44-yard line with eight minutes left in the half. They're about to get back in the ball game. This is Tico Beal running for eight yards. Well, they cut us the ribbons right here on this drive. Uh, first place, I want to comment. Our, our kicking game was so good the first week, and we broke down on two kickoffs. There's a couple of missed tackles. We're not getting in the middle of folks, locking up on them. Here comes the big play now. This is Ricky Floyd, the tailback, draw up and throw it. Well, this was a well-executed play. They used uh, short motion back in toward the formation and then the, the receiver flanker took off on the sweep and, and uh, it was just a well executed play they really caught us napping so down at the two and That's then on touchdown. the first play out of their power eye they go in for the touchdown 656 in the uh, left in the half and it's a 14-6 game they missed the point Auburn has not allowed an extra point so far this year now this is something you want to explain uh, big Ben play, and uh, Mark Robbins, I know, feels terrible there. We put three receivers on one side and threw the ball up for grabs. Mark's about 6'5", and he tried to tip the ball to one of our other receivers. Same play to the other side there, right? Same play. Uh, Robbins got uh, knocked down about halfway down there. Folks wondering what the penalty was for. It was They were chopping him down beyond uh, five yards of the line of scrimmage. And so George Portella, the, the actual play was over at that point, but on the penalty play, Auburn gets the ball, and George Portella gets one more play and a chance to kick it through, and he does. He can't end a half on a penalty play. That was a decision there. So it was a good break for the Auburn Tigers, uh, getting the uh, penalty play, and then George Portella coming on and uh, kicking the 42-yard uh, the, uh, field goal, 37-yard field goal. You have to feel good about Georgia's kicking. Certainly, uh, that, that was a big lift to us going in at the half right there. We, we were going for the score. We, we could have gotten a touchdown to play earlier. We didn't. Maybe those things even out like those base hits that fall in there. And, and we got a penalty as the half ended and got the kick at it, and George put it right through there. Okay. And so that uh, was some excitement at the uh, end of the first half of play. Not only was there excitement on the Auburn campus because of football yesterday, but some added excitement because the game is well underway, scheduled for completion in September of 1980. The expansion will create 11,000 new seats on the stadium's west side, new lights, and a three-tier press box, making Jordan-Hare one of the finest football facilities anywhere, with a seating capacity of nearly 75,000. Auburn opens a tenth school this fall. Oh, James please. Brooks returning the second half kickoff, and uh, this guy electrifies me when he gets the football, and, and he's going to break one here. There's this the fellow had a little angle on him, and he gets it out about the 50. Puts us in pretty good field position. It's a great place to begin uh, scrimmage, isn't it? At the sure 48 is. Yard sure line is. Uh, I like that. Okay, Brooks and Cribs are in the backfield together now. This is Cribs for four. Albert Teague making the stop. He's the nose guard. Second and six at the 44 now. We tried to change our formation a good bit, uh, Phil, and keep them off balance because they were, I think they're a formation-type defensive football team, and hopefully we gave them some problems there. Third and one coming here, going for the first down. There goes Joe what, Cribbs. Uh, they kind of whipped us up front then, and Joe made a dive and I think got uh, real close. Got the first down. First down. James Brooks running the sweep. James is close to breaking the sweep several times. We just got to improve on our execution. That play was real good for us in the first ball game. Second and seven at the 35. Inside goes Cribs on a good fake. Faked a lot of folks out Inside there. Inside Veer, and 
Our line came off real well. We were reading that. Charlie had the pass call again. Wisely pulled it down as they had it covered and took the option up in there. He's taking a little okay, too coach. much punishment. Fourth down play coming here. Fourth down. Watch this. I thought this was a great play here. We were going for the short yardage and we faked up inside and we had the option call with uh, Charlie and uh, Brooks as a pitch man. Watch this action. Watch them split them. They have what amounts to about 11 man line here, don't they? That's think? right. Had one guy for the quarterback to pitch out here. We blocked the pitch man. That's Mike Locklear blocking, and poor Charlie just kept the ball and has good quickness. He got down there. I think he kind of eased his throttle back a little here and sort of caught him right at the goal line. He was already in the end zone. So 11-20 left in the third quarter. Auburn goes up with the uh, point after 24-6. Portella having a perfect day yesterday, kicking the ball. Good snaps out of Gilbert Sellers and a good day for number uh, number six, Charlie Trotman. Charlie had an excellent day. There's a dangerous play right there. It's Clifford Tony. Cl Clifford played uh, making that tackle about really less than half the football game. He was limited. He's been working a little more and a little more, and he's coming back into his own. We're showing a couple of big third down completions as Southern put together a good drive, showing their medal here by coming back. I don't believe that flag amounted to anything. Big tight end uh, made all the all Southern uh, offensive team. It was a great play with their quarterback here. We were missing uh, too many tackles uh, in the open field. He certainly got to improve on that, but uh, he's a good runner. Maybe that had something to do with it. Came right back with the same play we defended it fairly well. That was Tico Beal. Now they're down to the 14-yard line. And McDaniel, the quarterback, looking for Taylor, his wideout. That was good uh, good pressure on him there. And Bob Harris, sophomore from Atlanta, broke up the pass. Here comes a red shirt Great freshman. Great play by Dan Dickerson from Woodlawn High School in Birmingham. Dan got upfield, played off two blockers, and made the tackle on their quarterback and forced him to go for the field goal. And Winston Walker, good strong leg kicker, kicks a 42-yarder. It is good, and so Southern comes back and gets three out of it anyway. So it's 24-9 now. We're in the third quarter. Still oh. a ball game, Phil. Sure is. Opening the fourth quarter now. Auburn headed goalward again. Another good drive this time. James Brooks, right side, seven yards. They're out to midfield now. We went in our three wide out formation here, and uh, we have the option of passing or running here according to how they defense it and Charlie is uh, directing things pretty well. Here's a counter option. Good block out on the corner by Mark Robbins. Uh, Joe Cribbs turns the corner for about 15 yards. Here. Joe had 93 yards for the day. Good day for him. Now to the 31-yard line. Inside for just a couple. Stewart, that big lineman, and Clump Taylor, the linebacker. They had some good individuals. Watch this now. On the mark to Mark Robbins. That was a well-executed play. Uh, Mark showing his dazzling uh, open field run in there. Mark's not the fastest guy around, but he's sure-handed, and uh, really he's hard to hard to tackle when he gets out there in the open field. Cribs with it. Auburn draws a holding call inside the five here. That's going to back him up 15 yards. Tough well, this is uh, really an unpardonable sin for us to get down here this close. Take it on out there and pitch it, Charlie. Uh, to get a holding penalty when we're right down there fixing the score, we'll put the game away. We could have gotten a lot more folks into the game. Here's a, a great throw and a great pass and uh, catch uh, by Byron Franklin. It was low and outside and thrown where they couldn't get to it and put us right back down there. And something happened on this play and uh, it sure did. We we didn't understand it. I want to say this: I appreciate the referee and I guess I can call his name. Uh, uh, Joe Hicks made the the proper decision, uh, explain the option, and he, he was good enough to come over and explain it to us because we didn't know what happened, and, and the referee uh, judged the play right. Okay, it was just a rare, it's, it, it, he has been uh, officiating for years and says the first time he's ever called that penalty, and there were a couple of officials who had seen it before, but you've never seen it. First time I've ever been associated with it, too, where they take the ball away from one team and give it to the other. It was an interference call in the end zone, uh, giving the uh, defensive team the ball, touchback, and out at the 20-yard line. The thing that made it uh, difficult for the crowd to understand, and they booed ferociously. Well, it was 40 it was away yards the away, and, and it was very close. It happened about simultaneously, really, and it was unnecessary on our part. It's something we'll have to correct because we can't afford those mistakes. 
So it, uh, it, it amounted to a turnover and a very unusual occurrence, yet uh, everybody uh, seemed to get along with the decision and no real problem. So we're back to play now, and in the closing moments of the game, that's James Brooks Can now. dive by James Brooks. Watch this play. Here's the same pass that we missed earlier, and Charlie really did a great job of Justin, and so did Byron Franklin. Now, Byron made a great over-the-shoulder catch. He, he turned his defender and made his cut, and the guy slipped, and he was by him. looked like he was, he was out early by himself out there. And that was a great uh, picture of the catch, a great catch. And of course, Byron has tremendous speed, and he puts a little pressure on you one-on-one -on -one out there. That yeah. official can run pretty well, too, because he's matching him stride for stride. Great catch, Charlie. Uh, now, watch watch this uh, in the end zone here now. This is uh, one of those crazy celebrations that goes on, and yeah, well, it's, Mike uh, Locklear is going to really give him a ride. supposed to be pretty well disciplined. They are, but I like to see happy people. And, uh, and when somebody else scores, it means they're unselfish, and it's, and it's our team. So that put a good finishing touch on a good Auburn effort. Uh, there's Coach Bobby Collins going out. Uh, a 39, a 31 to 9 victory over Southern Miss. Auburn's second win of the season in as many games. The Auburn offense had 248 yards against a team that had only allowed 78 a game. That was good. But the Auburn defense sacked the quarterback 14 times for a total of 89 yards. One of the big factors in the game. And when we come back, we're going to show you some of those sacks of the quarterback that that guy right there was involved in. Some great defensive plays, some sacks of the quarterbacks, 14, I believe, in number. We've strung together some of these, and you're going to see some new faces back there, some freshmen, Dan Dickerson, uh, defensive back Darrell Wilkes, and uh, Dow Altman. There's and Danny Skutak uh, making a great play. Danny had some great plays. Ken Hardy rushing the passer, and I believe that was uh, Ricky Westbrook inside there again. Now that was hey, Marshall Riley that was there. Marshall Riley, great play by Marshall. I want to apologize to Mike Colin. I, I told him that wasn't That was Marshall a fine Riley. play, and I think everyone knows who that is right there, uh, number 31. I had a great game. He was one of our captains last week. There's uh, I would run good from pressure. Frank, uh, Frank Warren, I think, makes it makes a tackle. I would run away from him too, Coach. Frank had a real fine football game. Here's Dan Dickerson. Our freshman from Woodlawn, batting down a pass there. Got his hands up, rushed the pass real well. Great Here's uh, Darrell Wilkes, a freshman safety from over around Phoenix City, Alabama, breaking up that pass. They scoot tack, uh, missed him, and lo and behold, there's a freshman from uh, T.R. Miller in Bruton. I believe that's... Uh, I believe that was Freddie. That was Freddie on yeah. that play. Here comes that was Freddie right? on that play. Here's Dow Altman. Freshman from T.R. Miller High School in Bruton, Alabama. It's Dow's first varsity game that he's played. Freddie looked like he could make it in the rodeo business the way he hogtied that guy and got in there. Well, we, we didn't get in the middle of him, but he was uh, kind of tricky and deceptive back there, and we had to get, I think, what we could. Uh, they did a good job rushing the passer, and there's nothing, there's no substitute for pressing the passer. That's one of the greatest pass defenses in the world. During the week, there was an annual get-together with the Auburn players and many of the families around Auburn, Alabama. We have some tape of that, Coach, and you tell us who you recognize in the action here. Well, we, we have a welcome back party every year for our, our players, all of our freshmen and everybody and the families in the Auburn Opelika area. There's Edmund Nelson, uh, Bob Harris, uh, Bill Grisham, many of them. They feed the players in their homes, and then we come back over for dessert at our dorm, and I think the families and our players uh, enjoy it tremendously. This is, There's several different I ones believe, these, at the home of uh, Lamar Talbert and mm -hmm. several people there that they entertained uh, all eight or ten players, a few families together. <laughs> it's been a, there's Lamar there, mm -hmm. a good occasion for, for all of us, really. I think for the people in the community to get to know our players and, and our players to uh, maybe get in front of these folks and they can see that how they really like. That was Portella There's going a little heavy Charles on the ice Thomas, cream there. Portella, that's right. And Freddie's always like, around uh, the kids. He loves Freddy, kids. You know what? Freddie's feeding one of, his, one of his fans there. Sure he is. He's a very sensitive young man. We're going to see him again with a little children bit. children like it very much, too. You know? There he is with uh, oh, that's this. the big uh, up-and-coming tackle. Huh? <laughs> I'm behind the tiger. So that's that's great. We appreciate that. And we appreciate the people in our in our area sure. uh, doing this for us. Everybody looked like they really had a good time. I think so. Uh, to revert back to a week ago, uh, 
the uh, Kansas State game. Had a play happen, Coach, that, that probably won't happen again this year and maybe for a long time. Uh, we'll set it up briefly. As Byron Franklin went out to his position, he noticed there was no cornerback out there. Byron couldn't... Uh, he couldn't signal because what was the play was called on the first well, sound. Well, he couldn't yell. We had a, a running play call on the first sound, and uh, we didn't uh, allow for a checkoff on this play. And he didn't want to alert the uh, Kansas State bench that nobody he, was out there. He, uh, <laughs> he got to uh, point over to Charlie Trotman, I think, and Charlie uh, saw this and, and knew what he had to do, and I thought it was a great adjustment by Charlie. All right, let's pick up the uh, account of that with Charlie and Byron right here. The first thing a quarterback does, Phil, when he goes into the line is to check the defensive secondary and the defensive front and, and see if there are any weaknesses. And uh, when I looked out on the right flank and uh, saw Byron out there, he was kind of jumping up and down and waving his arms and, and uh, you know, trying to get my attention because there just wasn't anybody on him. They, I was afraid, as a matter of fact, that I, I gave the whole situation away because I, I kind of looked up and I waved my arms, you know, and Charlie said I look like a bunny rabbit out there jumping up and down. I thought for a second that I'd underthrown it. I was going, oh, no. <laughs> if I'd underthrown that, I think I'd just dug I think I know. I think I'd dug a hole and uh, just crawled under. <laughs> I, I believe he was thinking about free safety coming over, you know, and maybe having a chance of breaking the pass up, so he just didn't worry about throwing it too far. He just let me have it. And then you just had to outrun that guy. Yeah, foot race. <laughs> you think that'll happen again this year? Not likely. Christmas only comes once a year. <laughs> oh, only once a year. That play no, may never come we'd again. We'd like for it to happen some more, but I don't think we'll be afforded that luxury. We'll return with our scouting report on who? The Tennessee Vols after this. One of the biggest games of the year coming up. Uh, of course, we go to Knoxville to play the Tennessee Volunteers. They've made tremendous improvement uh, under Coach Johnny Majors uh, the last couple of years. Jimmy Streeter, their quarterback. Uh, Reggie Harper, their tight end. Uh, it's going to be a tough, tough football game. Uh, we, we've got to make great preparation this week. I know our people are excited. They've been pointing for this game for a year, and uh, we know they're going to be ready, and we better get ourselves ready. All you have to say is that it's Tennessee, and it's next week, and we'll be back with you after, with the replay. Thank you, Coach. Good luck. Thank you, Phil. The under the Auburn Football Review. Yesterday, the Tennessee Volunteers ended a three-game losing streak with a 35-17 to victory over the Auburn Tigers. Case of a Fired up bunch of volunteers, Coach. Well, Phil, there's not a lot to smile about today. I, I can tell you that. I haven't found anything. I, it was a fired up group. Uh, I want to credit their uh, fans, uh, their coaches, their players, their press in Knoxville. Uh, uh, they all, uh, they all got we're, behind we're the pointing team. for this thing. Even the band director uh, yelled at us a little bit. And uh, I think the whole group was uh, fired up. I think that's a typical example of what great fan enthusiasm and all can do for you. Of course, the game's played on the field, and uh, there's no question about that. They, they did a great job. Tennessee had a great day. Uh, maybe they played a little better than they really could, and, and we didn't play quite as well as we could, and I think all the elements combined to make it a, a tough day for, for Auburn. I was proud of our people there. We had a, an excellent following in Knoxville, and, and our players played hard. We just couldn't come up with a big play and when we needed to, and we did a very poor job of containing their fine quarterback, Jimmy Streeter. We had contained him well for the last couple of years, but uh, he had his day, and, and we helped him look good. He is a fine player. How much of a factor do you think the uh, opening kickoff uh, was? Well, Phil, it's very hard to say. I, I think that's all they needed to light up. Uh, they were sitting there. They weren't really sure they could beat Auburn, I, I don't think. And, they, and we'd go down and relax on the kickoff, and they would turn it all away. And I think that gave them that confidence and, and it got the fans excited and they stayed excited the whole day. Our team showed a lot of poise. I felt like coming right back on, on one of the finest drives that we've had all year. But then after that, uh, it was tough going for us because we never got the momentum. Okay, we'll get into the uh, first half of play in just a moment after this word from our sponsor. 85,900 fans at Neyland Stadium. That's the largest crowd ever to witness a Southeastern Conference football game. Tennessee walking horse, by the way, coach ridden by a former Alabamian, I guess he's a Tennessean now, Bobby Goldsboro's daughter. Tennessee won the toss, they elected to receive. That, of course, turned out to be a very fortuitous decision. Well, it certainly did. Uh, we tried to pin the uh, kickoff in on the sideline, and there we missed the tackle right there, and that's all that young man needed. Uh, I thought George Catella thought he could ward him off there. He got some help, nobody came. I, I don't know what happened to all of our people, but it was a great 
return and uh, a poor kickoff coverage on life harder combination of the two. Of them. So I think that's all uh, Tennessee needed to get going. As you can see there, the excitement in the stand. So Auburn goes on scrimmage at the 20 following a long Duncan kickoff, Allen Duncan, and that was the fact that coach is ability to kick the ball in the end zone away from the end zone consistently. Big third down play coming. Uh, that's Brooks with it for a yard. Brad White, the defensive tackle, making the stop. Big third down play coming here to keep this drive going. James Brooks sweeping the right side. Six yards and one. Tell you what, that's down. great running effort. And that little guy right there run over folks if they don't watch out. Uh, he's he's tough. He means to run the football. He made some fine runs. There's another one right there for six or eight yards. Just determined running. Pretty good blocking up front. This is a strong drive. Second down and four. Joe Cribbs with it now and getting seven big ones. You can see the offensive line blowing him back. Coming off the ball real well. That was the outside veer out of the eye formation. Charlie reading it pretty well. Here he comes right back and gets the pitch and we'll get out on the corner. That's George Peoples with the ball getting eight yards. George Second Peoples from Tampa, Florida. George is playing a little more and a little more and going to be an excellent player for us. There's Joe up inside. We're running off our center's block on their nose guard and and make it some excellent yardage there. It's first and 10 at the Tennessee 37. Big play coming, Charlie Trotman. Charlie handles that option real well, and that he froze that in there for just a second. We'll see Charlie at ground level now. Option, deciding to hold on to it and making a fine run. This is a very strong drive, 13 plays, only third down twice in the... Uh, in the 13 play drive you get some idea of the way Auburn was moving the ball on the ground. Now it's first and 10 at the 17 yard line. Here's a big play. James Brooks on first down getting good yardage on first down giving him some options. Down fine running, running on the line. sweep there. We blocked it pretty well. We're close to going all the way on that play. On second and four. Joe Cribbs going inside for about three. Now it's third and one. So this is not really a big third down play. You got two pops at it, and Joe will get his first down with that patented up and over move of his. Joe has got a knack for uh, for getting in that crack and, and getting into the end zone. Out of the power eye now, trying to slip Ed Dubose inside, and he gets a couple down to about the three. But the touchdown play is coming now with Joe Cribbs making a good move inside. For the touchdown. Excellent blocking, excellent running at the point of attack. I thought it was a fine drive, Phil, and our offense showed a lot of poise coming right back from that uh, kickoff return to take the ball the length of the field and score and tie the score. But Tennessee comes right back and appears headed goalward again on the running and throwing of Jimmy Streeter. This is first and 10 at the 31. Jimmy Streeter rolling out. Here's where he hurts you. We uh, did the first job, as I said, of containing uh, all day on their quarterback. Uh, we, we can't let a guy with that much speed outside on the corners uh, as we did and, and stay in the football game. Now, uh, at the 44-yard line, Streeter going for his tight end, number 85, Reggie Harper, over the middle. Good catch. It's in a crowd there, and Reggie Harper is a fine football player and a great big tight end and an excellent target. Third and 10 now after a couple of plays. Clifford Tony is going to step inside and intercept this Streeter pass. It was a great play by Clifford Tony, a junior strong safety from Huntsville. Clifford's just now really getting his, his legs back in condition. He played some last week, and this is his first game to start. Tigers couldn't move it. Tennessee goes back on offense now after the Skip Johnston punt. This is Terry Daniels, one of their speedsters on the screen pass, making a nine-yard game. We didn't tackle well, Phil. I, I'm, I'm not, uh, this is no excuse, uh, just a reason. That there, there was a lot of uh, slipping. Of course, both of us played on the same turf, and uh, there was a lot of slipping, if you noticed yesterday, uh, mm -hmm. by both teams, really. I think that's a very poor footing. First and 10 at the Auburn 36, James Berry, another of those Tennessee cookies. Uh, slipping uh, that really looked, uh, looked like he was out to practice early, and James McKinney saved a touchdown. We didn't uh, want to play James as much as we, we did, but a couple of injuries forced us to. Touchdown coming to Harper. Well, I read where that was a play action fake that wasn't a play action that was just a, a motion away and flood back to the weak side and sending the back and the tight end out and we covered the back and wisely Jimmy Streeter found his tight end along to the touchdown. Now the Tigers move out to midfield on the next possession but they lost the ball on a fumble. Tennessee goes in the offense again. Gary Moore the guy who ran the kickoff back runs for 20 here down to the Auburn 29 yard line. 
So it's first and ten there. Moore again. He's in the game fresh now on the pitch. And Freddie Smith will run him down right here. Too many missed tackles. Well, too many missed tackles in all afternoon. Second and seven of the 15 now. Streeter pitching to Hubert Simpson. And he's out of the bounds at about the five yard line. Now, here comes Gary Moore on the touchdown play. Break a couple of tackles. He sure did, about three of them. That's good, strong running. Good, strong running. Gary Moore, he's a senior. He was recruited by Bill Battle uh, before he left, and it's turned out to be a good runner for them this year. He mostly returned punts and the kickoffs last year, if I recall. A tipped ball interception stopped Auburn midway through the quarter. Tennessee again will get the ball here, and this will be Jimmy Struder on third down and eight, you're about to see. And Bob Harris is going to step up and make another interception of the Struder pass. I think Bob Harris is probably playing as consistent a football for us as, as anybody we have. He's a steady, durable, tough football player. Auburn couldn't move, and so George Portella comes in and cracks a 47-yarder, a big play there to get Auburn within 21 to 10 and give the Tigers some uh, some momentum here for a time. Well, we, we had opportunities to get back in the ball game in the first half, and of course we gave Tennessee the ball way down deep in their territory here with about two minutes to go, and, and we let them out of the hole. And I think this touchdown that they, they get at after this drive really hurt us and that, that was, was a big play, play in the drive that was by uh, was Ingram with the uh, with the reception there this was the most damaging drive of the game coach with uh, toward the end of the half and that, their ability to get in the end zone there's no doubt about that Auburn contained that play pretty well now uh, it's uh, they call timeout after each of these plays because the clock is running close and they try to uh, do it a little bit to do there reverse pass there and we covered it pretty well now here's the play, Jimmy Streeter, third and four at the six, and they've called time with only nine seconds left on the clock, and he's just going to outrun the uh, defense into the corner of the end zone. Well, you can't have your defensive end go inside the blocker on the, on the sprint out pass. That's just uh, death there. Let him outside. He's about a nine, uh, seven, eight sprinter with great speed. And that was our breakdown right there. So they take a 28 to 10 lead into the dressing room with that last. Uh, second drive uh, perhaps the big uh, point in the ball game for Tennessee so halftime it's 28 10 we'll be back in just a moment we'll return in just a minute to talk more about the halftime situation at Neyland Stadium but first our Auburn feature this summer half that's a long way to come back I suppose the first thing you got to do though you got to shut them out to have any chance of uh, coming back well Phil we felt like uh, there were a couple things that had to take place uh, number one uh, yeah, I just don't think you can win unless defensively you can you can shut them down a little bit, and we felt like uh, we had to do that. Uh, then also there was a big burden on our offense. We needed to establish momentum, and we felt like we could do it at this time if we'd come back and and take the ball down and get a score within a reasonable length of time. We'd be back in the ball game, and and then if something happens, we get another one. They begin to get a little uh, uneasy. Uh, we still felt like we could win at the half, and I guess you've always got to feel that way. And I think most of our players did. And uh, as you uh, will see, some of that happened because for a time in the third quarter, it looked like Auburn was going to stage a, a, that 28 and then getting something going into the third quarter. Very important to get something, make something happen in the third quarter. Coach. Well, I think uh, there are two stages of the game that are most important, Phil. Uh, the first uh, five minutes of the game and the first five minutes of the second half to establish your momentum and, and, and get uh, make your presence known out on the football field. Okay, Auburn stopped to Tennessee on the first drive. They have field position now at the 48-yard line, and here comes the touchdown play. This is a great run here, one of the finest runs you'll ever see. James must have broken three or four tackles, and uh, I'm not sure about that block there by the official. He got a lot of credit for it. I don't know whether the guy would have caught James or not. Maybe he would, maybe he wouldn't, but if it happened to us, probably nothing's been said about it. So we'll take them uh, any way we can get them. Look at that effort. Look Isn't at that, that running. That's tremendous uh, running by a fine uh, young football player. And once he gets out there, he didn't need uh, much help. It's interesting that uh, when you look at the stats, and uh, you know, stats don't mean a thing, but Auburn was in 10 yards of Tennessee on rushing and within 25 on passing. It's a question of Tennessee making the bigger plays and Auburn not making the big plays yesterday. Phil, I think turnovers uh, had something to do with that, too. Of course, you take 
the kickoff return, and we had four turnovers, and they had two. And that, to me, was the difference in the football game. Okay, Tennessee comes back late in the quarter. That's a 14-yard throw to Harper at midfield. And then three plays later, Jimmy Streeter again with his ability to move down the field. Great quickness. He got it in the end zone, and this, of course, was the touchdown that Auburn could not afford. And they take that 35-17 to 17 lead late in the third quarter. But I want you to see the Auburn uh, team gritedly come back here. Two long drives in the fourth quarter to show that they do have some spirit and some metal, and they still felt that they could win this football game. Trying right here on the uh, reverse. He wanted to throw that ball, didn't he, Coach? <laughs> well, they will save that for later, Phil. Uh, uh, we had that call that uh, we would had it open uh, the week before, and uh, didn't throw it. It's a run or pass, and we've got a guy that can throw it. Hit. There's excellent protection, nice throw. I thought Charlie threw the ball really better than, than he's thrown it uh, in a long, long time. I had a lot of zip on the football, good accuracy. He threw a couple that we'd like to have back. Tennessee blitzed us a lot, as you see here, and Charlie did a great job of escaping the strong safety blitz and scoring the rest of the bird. Beautiful pass. Our, our people did a good job picking up their blitzes. This is a good drive now that Auburn is putting together. And, of course, the pitch now on big third down play to Joe Cribbs. Now, that's first down play. 17-yard run deep into Tennessee territory. Now, Auburn's back at first and 15 after a penalty. Watch well, James Brooks get by. That penalty really uh, really hurt us there, uh, Phil. And, and, again, that's down in that horseshoe end. And that noise is a factor. And, Caused our players to jump off. Here we are picking up the strong safety blitz. Charlie is trying to get that ball up and over there to Mark Robbins. And, uh, that, that cost us dear right there because the wind's scoring position. That's awfully uh, disappointing. And the only thing we can do about it is, is to get it and try to profit from that mistake. After the arm defense holds again, the Tigers put together their another drive. Brooks taking the pitch. That's uh, Joe Cribb uh, there. Charlie, we had a pass call. and. It was a read route, and the receiver was covered, but, of course, he's the same guy that's got to take the pitch. Throwing for Byron Franklin now. Good catch and a good run after the catch. Great, uh, great catch. That was picked up some blocks downfield. Here comes James down to throw a block. Close to getting that uh, play all the way. Now from ground level on first and 10 at the Tennessee 40. Here's the option and the pitch to James Brooks. James uh, likes to run into those uh, orange shirts. Well, when those backs uh, you know, get him hemmed up over there, he'll, he'll go into them. Out to 38, Trotman looking for Mark Robbins. Nice good throw. Play. Nice uh, route. Uh, good protection on the corner. Chester Willis doing a, a good job in there for us. Here's a great back. effort coming here, Coach. Watch Rusty Bird go after this ball. Well, we, we tried to throw the backside post, and you saw Rusty had his man beaten a tremendous effort. Rusty hurt himself a little bit on that, but uh, just about six inches away. Great play here on fourth down and 11 when they had to have it. Uh, Trotman making a great play there going to Mark Robbins. Three plays later, again on fourth down and three, and Robbins will fall down right here. And well, that's that slippage we were talking about. And, uh, Unfortunately, it happened at a bad time. I think he was open. He was in the end zone. But it was a great game uh, for Tennessee, and I know that they're, they're happy to, uh, to beat Auburn. And uh, Coach Majors and staff did a fine job in uh, getting their people and their fans ready. And for us, uh, we just got to regroup and get our wounded together and uh, get ready for the next one. Okay, it's a 35-17 to 17 victory for the Vols, ending a three-game losing streak. We'll be back with a scattering report on next week's opponent, the unbeaten North Carolina State after this. So, next week's coming up, and we'll talk about that in, this, in just a minute. Coach, uh, oh, I don't think uh, a little levity at this point uh, will hurt anybody. Do you? Well, maybe we, maybe we need a little bit, Phil. Okay. Uh, the season's young. Uh, our schedule's tough, and... Of course, we've got a big opponent coming up, and, and we've got to do a great job this week. We're always looking for an opportunity to promote the offensive linemen, the young, sung heroes of football. Uh, a few days ago, we went over to the uh, dorm, and uh, we uh, asked all the offensive linemen uh, a question that, uh, and let them wrestle with it. We asked them, why are offensive linemen, to a man, the most handsome players on the team. It's a difficult <laughs> question for those guys. It here. is, and this is the reaction that we got from them. Coach Gibbs says it's because we're not athletes. So I guess if we're not athletes, then we have to pick it up in some other area, and probably that's why we're so much better looking than the rest of the players. 
I think you will. If you play an offensive line, you got to have something going for you. <laughs> I think maybe God planned it that way because he knew we wouldn't get much of the glory or anything else. Maybe uh, he wanted us to at least maybe have the girls or something, huh? Well, I, I think the reason that we, you know, we're, we're so much better looking than them is because we work hard at it. Well, I guess it's because our coach isn't as handsome as the rest of the coaches. Well, you have to make up for him? Yeah, we have to make up for our coach. Oh, you're in trouble, man. I'll tell you what, Phil, seeing that uh, you probably made up this question at dinner, and it's an ambiguous question to begin with. You're not an offensive lineman. I am an offensive lineman. But with those kind of questions which are loaded to begin with, we just, uh, the only reason we're handsome because we work harder than anybody else. That's true. I don't have any idea. <laughs> I think it has a lot to do with breeding. We try a lot harder. We spend a great deal of time looking at ourselves in mirrors. Hair dryers. And hair dryers. <laughs> the whole works. <laughs> it must. <laughs> so, the question has been answered. That's fine group they young men, it. really. They do work hard. I'll tell you what, and they're doing a fine job, and they're getting better every week. And certainly uh, this week, they've got to do a great job. That's right, because they'll be facing one of the, uh, the, t the team that's leading the Atlantic Coast Conference now, uh, North Carolina State, unbeaten now in four games. Uh, that must have been a shootout they had with Wake Forest yesterday. They win in the last five minutes of the game on about a 43 or four yard field goal. So Phil, they have a fine team, uh, well coached, and uh, some great players. And, and they were ranked in the top 20, and they're still up there, and uh, they're doing well. And, and they'll come into Auburn riding high. There's no doubt about that. We have some tape of uh, North Carolina State in action. Show you some of their personnel. First play we have is uh, their quarterback Scott Smith, who's a senior. Uh, there are 12 seniors on that team, and he's throwing there to the tight end, Lynn Dawson. There's a football name for you. He's another of those good tight ends that the Tigers have been facing uh, all season. 6'3", 220, and a good catch there. Now, this is one of their good-sized yeah, running backs. That's two White great Sullivan. backs, uh, Vickers and Sullivan, I believe. Mm -hmm. And, of course, Scott Smith, the guy we tried to recruit uh, out of Atlanta, very hard. He's a, he's a fine, very quarterback. That's Billy Ray Vickers there. He played uh, against two, Auburn years, two ago. years ago. That's right, in Auburn. Their center is maybe the best center in America, mm -hmm. uh, Jim Richter. This is the defense now led by all-conference tackle. That's big number 90 there. That's uh, Simon Gupton. And number two coming up to help is uh, a guy they consider an all-American candidate, free safety Woodrow Wilson. They are a Veer football team, Coach, and uh, they've been 8-4. and four year before last nine and three last year two bowls so they have a lot going they sure do and it's going to be a great game and I, i'd like to appeal to our fans uh, certainly to, that this is the time we need you and our, our students because this is a big game for us it's, it's a young season and uh, last week's loss is very disappointing but uh, we've got to come back this week we need your help and i think some excitement in old jordan harris stadium would certainly help do it one quick question about the injury situation coach i know there's there's some people who are going to have to have operations Phil, it's bad. Uh, I haven't gotten all the final reports. We'll get it today, but it, it doesn't look good. The Auburn Football Review with head coach Doug Barfield is brought to you by South Central Bell. Welcome to the Auburn Football Review. Yesterday, Auburn defeated North Carolina State, unranked and 14th in the country, 44 to 31. Coach, if you like to see folks cross the goal line, that was a game to see yesterday. Phil, it was quite an exciting ball game, and one that even when we got uh, far ahead, you couldn't relax because they were so capable of scoring. And I guess we weren't uh, doing a great job of stopping them, but uh, we we had to score to win, and and we did. We had a lot of people play well, and uh, the reason I'm smiling is that uh, my wife asked me to please smile today. <laughs> uh, I just didn't look uh, good not smiling. I'm glad to be able to and I'm very proud of our players uh, for giving such great effort. Uh, I would say the circumstances were bad but they weren't that bad. We had a great crowd at Auburn. Our, our students were really behind us and, and uh, pulling hard and, and everybody seemed to get enlivened when, especially when we came from behind. That adversity in the first part of the game uh, with a lot of uh, people on defense injured, a lot of new faces and people playing in different positions, to come back like that must have given everybody a great deal of confidence. 
I think it did. I think it was a lift for all of our players and, and all of our people. We were down 14 to nothing. We had a turnover, and they, they cashed it. And then they got another score before we got on track. But I didn't notice any, any panic on the sidelines, and, and all I noticed was our players just came more determined and uh, just gritted their teeth and, and, and went to work and, and came from behind, and that's a tribute to their courage. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll get into that uh, first half action, and there's a lot of it in there in just a minute after we take this pause for the word from our sponsor. Pretty weather in Auburn yesterday. It was kind of breezy, though. We were on that concourse up there, Coach, and that wind was really coming through there. Yeah, where it was. I tell you, it made it difficult to hear down uh, on ground level, too, Phil. I think the wind was a factor. It was a beautiful day, a little little cool uh, and empty feeling in the air, but the wind was, was blowing. It was definitely a factor. I looked up and saw Billy Carter in the stands. Billy and Sybil were there. We were happy to have them as our guests at our Friday night meal with our team, and, and then they stayed for the game, and they, they're just pleasant people to be around. And Barbara Mandrell, we'll see more of Barbara Mandrell. She is going to become an official member of the football team a little later on in the program. Let's get into the uh, film, though, and we'll see the Tigers take the field. Uh, clear skies, temperatures in the 70s, just a beautiful day for football, and I'm sure you kind of were at this point, Coach, uh, because the defense was uh, had been juggled so much, and... Uh, Things are going to get busy right away anyway. Well, we, we've made a lot of, a lot of changes. Uh, there, uh, Billy and Sybil from over in Plains, Georgia, seated with some other dignitaries. Yes, we were a little concerned, but we felt like we had to go. And uh, we started out uh, a little slow right here with a turnover inside our 25, and NC State recovered it, put us in a, in a bad situation. Joe Cribbs doesn't usually do that. That's a, that's a rare moment. Really started us off in a bad way. State's going to cash it in two plays. Scott Smith throw to the fleet wideout. Lee Jukes for the touchdown. Right down the middle. Great pass and run right there. Well, we, we had a man almost uh, on the quarterback. He made a great play, but it, he had enough time uh, for their people to, to run a crossing route against our man-to-man -man coverage, and that certainly uh, hurt us at that particular time. Made it easy for us. Auburn moved out to the 40, but couldn't go beyond that. That's the State 40, and then... Scott Smith comes back throwing again. This time, he's hitting Mike Quick on a 22-yard play. That was a great catch by their receiver on the sideline to keep his feet in bounds. Lee Jukes uh, will be behind the Auburn defense this time and make another big play. He's quite a pass receiver. Well, that's great speed, uh, Phil, and uh, with a little time back there, and had a chance to run a post cut uh, against us and uh, showed great speed, and the ball was laid, laid, thrown in there perfectly. Billy Ray Vickers, who had such a big day against Auburn two years ago, gets the touchdown, and suddenly, 10 minutes into the game, NC State is leading 14 to nothing, with things kind of beginning to slip away, it seems. That didn't look very good, did it, Phil? I thought our offense uh, responded well. I kept the poise and came out and got a drive going. This was the inside veer, an excellent read by, by Charlie Trotman there, a good play call at the line of scrimmage. On first and 10 at the 31 now, Charlie... Looks to throw and then pulls it down. Charlie uh, did a great job in turning a, a negative play into a positive. There. They had a strong safety blitz on there, and he wisely kept the football. Here's the third and long. Charlie stood in there and dumped the ball off to Joe Cribbs, and there's great running uh, to get the first down. We had to have some big plays in here to keep this drive going. Cash two or three third downs in this drive. Now at the state 44-yard line. This is James Brooks on the left side and cutting up and making some. James breaks a tackle and makes some yardage there uh, on his own, really. Wasn't much uh, blocking done at the line of scrimmage. That's great running. Watch Chester Willis now in the ballgame. Watch him give Auburn a lift. He gets the block up front to get uh, James Brooks through there for a few yards and a first down. And now watch Chester Willis run with the football. Little Chester on the inside veer. This is a tremendous read. He's running hard. I mean, he wants to score. That's a great effort. I think he fired everybody up there. Here's a replay from ground level. Excellent block, I believe, by Bill Grisham there. And on the line of scrimmage, there's Chester breaking one tackle and running over another one. You could just Blocked see this, Coach. Mark. Give a lift. Just, <laughs> it sure did. It kind of uh, fired me up, I tell you. That's uh, intense uh, play right there. And the fans have come up now with Auburn getting close to the goal line. Charlie's checking off here. He's going to give the football to Cribs. There's another good block there by Willis and I believe Stevenson uh, on the left side. Phillip Hall, great play. Joe Cribs heading goalward, scoring his, uh, let's see, I believe his fourth touchdown of the season, the first of 
yesterday, and he's going to go to score three times before the day is over. Yeah, it's great to see some happy people there who woke up. And... Auburn missed the point. And then NC State has it, and uh, again, Auburn is going to pick up the fumble recovery. It's uh, Maybe this evened up there with us fumbling to them. Uh, Danny Skutak caused that fumble, and Ken Hardy recovered it. And Charlie Thomas, a uh, young sophomore from Douglasville, comes in for his first uh, play of the day, and we call a misdirection option, and a trap option, we call it. And there's a great block by Chet Cheshire down there. Charlie makes a good cut back, and he heads for the goal line and really runs through some folks. Isn't that a great way to begin uh, your play for the day? Yeah. <laughs> it sure is. That young man uh, has a lot, of, a lot of talent, a lot of ability. If he keeps working, he's going to be a fine player for us. So Auburn's getting close now. They get it back after the punt. Thomas again is the quarterback, and watch him go on this play. Eight yards and a first down uh, uh, from first and 15, same, I should say. Same play here. We were not executed quite, a, quite as well, but uh, he made a good play out of it. Now watch him go to the other side. This is the inside veer. We've got a good block by a fullback there, Joe Cribbs. This is a tremendous run by Charlie. He breaks uh, three or four tackles and heads down the sideline and, and kind of ran out of gas. People asked me why we took him out at that uh, particular phase of the game. Now, there's a, a fine block by Joe Cribbs. The end takes the pitch. Uh, a Christie. tight end gets a piece of the guy, and he just runs Charlie through the those two tackles. And, and heads down the sideline. Here comes Joe throwing another block. That's two blocks that he threw on the same play. That's excellent effort. That's tremendous when the guy who's uh, led the conference in rushing can get out there and get a block and for him. Doesn't mind blocking. That's encouraging. He now put, give uh, Charlie quick. in now, and uh, he's going to take him on in. Quick five, quick down to the five-yard line now, and second and goal at the two. Here comes Joe Cribbs as he gets airborne and makes that forced landing in the end zone that he uh, can do so well. Second touchdown of the day for Joe. And Auburn is now ahead in the ball game, 21-14. Well, that was a quick turnaround. Uh, going we're two. going for two here. We've got a sweet pass call, and Joe wisely uh, runs the ball, sees his man covered. That's a pass-run option, and he, he executed it real well. State's going to come right back now, though, on the scoring of Scott Smith to Lee Jukes. This pass play good for 53 yards down to the Auburn oh, 8. Uh, gracious. That ball hung in the air so long. We had a defender there, Johnny Green. His great hustle by Clifford Toner to save the touchdown. I thought we had the pass defended well. We just didn't get, get the ball. Danny Skutak and Clifford Toner are going to stop Vickers here. There's Clifford Toner making that tackle. Second and goal at the six now. Smith back to throw, looking for Baker in the end zone. Gave him a little too much time back there. Incomplete. That's a fine play by Bob Harris in the end zone to, to save the touchdown. Third and goal. This might have been a key series here. Freddie Smith and Scootak stop him right there. So they have to kick the field goal. So it's a kind of a psychological lift there. It's 21-17, but uh, Auburn has stopped them uh, down close. Next Auburn possession. George Peoples is the tailback showing some great running ability. Nine yards and a first down. George is going to get untracked here before long. He's a young sophomore from Tampa, Florida, and he's just really kind of getting his feet on the ground. Charlie Trotman throwing for Byron Franklin. Great, great pass, catch. great catch. You're right, Excuse Bill. Me, I tell you, it really <laughs> was. I, he had somebody hanging right on him there. Charlie checked that play also. Here comes another big pass completion. Folks are coming after us on the blitz, and that's a flood right there. Joe Cribbs coming out of the backfield. Charlie was four for five for the day for 40 yards. Great play there. That was one of the great plays that he made, and uh, people were talking about that's a great run by You're uh, talking Dane about Brooks. him getting rid of the ball so quick, but, aren't you? That's right. We had a loaded option, and our loaded blocker didn't get there soon enough, but Charlie got the pitch out and we blocked that guy we walked in, but James just decided to get in there anyhow. Determined running. That's some of the hidden skills of a quarterback that people don't notice, how quickly he got that ball away and, and made the touchdown play by quick reaction. Exactly right. Uh, that was a tremendous play by Charlie Trotman. Okay, so uh, they made the point, and Auburn has come back and pulled it out 28-17. to 17. And he even had a couple of uh, good punts against the wind. Turnover coming. That's Frank Warren hitting uh, Scott Smith and James McKinney coming up with a football. James McKinney covered the football. That was a big, big play for us there. Uh, to get us going here in the second half. We run the sweep to the 
Backside tight end, and I think get about seven, eight yards there, which is a good play for us. Touchdown coming. Watch Joe Cribbs. Third score of the day for number 20. Well, Joe uh, just made that, that play really on his own because we we had a play call to the left, and he bounced off of a tackler and uh, went against the grain to the right and went all the way in the end zone for the score. And so uh, Joe Cribbs picks up a very important touchdown as Auburn catches one early, and they moved out to a third quarter a lead of 35 to 17. After exchanging punts now, the Auburn defense uh, is going to bow its back against North Carolina on this drive. Third and one at the state 46. There's Frank Warren making a big play. We, we get the pitch out. Johnny Green comes up and makes a tackle and just short of the first down. I believe they're going to go Fourth and one. Here. Right. Can't make it again. There's a, there's a big play when we had to have it. And, of course, I think North Carolina State thought they were behind and they, they felt like they had to go for it and certainly this inspired us we didn't get a touchdown on that but we got field position skip johnson's punt has him backed up again that's vickers getting only a yard he averaged uh, skip did 47 yards on five punts had a big day second and eight now smith throwing and another guy named smith defending right there there's a great time in there i thought we'd intercepted the football there for a minute uh, freddie made the tackle about the time the young man got his hands on the football. Two-point play coming now. Frank Warren's going to run the quarterback down. He deliberately throws it away. <laughs> yeah, Dan Dixon put the pressure on him. We had our strong side end coming hard, and then uh, Frank uh, Warren reacted out and had the quarterback and threw the ball away. So Auburn picks up two there, making it 37-17. Uh, and, uh, of course, State has to free kick from the 20 and watch this run back. Well, close to going all the way here. It was a good return. We've got good field position. If I remember correctly, this might have been when we uh, had a couple of problems here, but here comes Charlie on the option again. Charles Thomas, sophomore from Douglasville, Georgia. He can do it. Well, he handles the veer pretty well there. We don't get much, uh, much out of that play, but a uh, good read, a good pitch. Now to the right side as uh, the sophomore is holding on to the football. Now, this is pass or run, right? Well, that's right. It's a runner pass option. We had the pass call, and he saw as the C was covered and wisely kept the football and turned down the field. Okay, now we go to James Brooks on the uh, toss sweep, and he gets yardage down deep. We're moving the football well now. We've got, uh, got something going here. Touchdown coming. Charlie Thomas scoring for the second time of the day. Look at this run. Well, he broke a couple of tackles there. We had a, a sprint out pass call, a flood pass with three receivers to that side, and they had a blitz on, and Charlie just kept the ball and, and broke one tackle, and that was it. Here There's he comes out. Excellent uh, replay. There's a, a fullback block, and it didn't really make a great block, but uh, here's the guy that, that made the play. So the Auburn Tigers have tacked up another on the running of ball away. Charlie Thomas. 44-17, 5.52 left in the third quarter. And you would begin to think along about this time that uh, the old coach was going to get to enjoy the fourth quarter, but not so. Well, we, we tried to play a lot of people, and we, we did. But uh, we didn't play enough folks on defense. And here's, here's what happened. We were a little late uh, getting to the guy. Lock up there. Clifford, you're going to get hurt. Eddie Jackson making that catch for NC State and getting them rolling. Billy Vickers now, 13 yards down to the Auburn, 15 on a good play. You say the defense is just getting a little tired. Well, I, I think so, Phil. We had to play too, too long there in, in the latter part of the third and the fourth quarter. And we, we needed some fresh people. Unfortunately, we just didn't have a lot of them. And Okay, we've switched side of the field for the fourth quarter now, and Freddie Smith and Clifford Tony stop him short of the goal line. But on the next play now, Sullivan will score. And with uh, one minute gone in the fourth period, State creeps up a little now. It is 44-24 after the point. So things are not over yet. No, they certainly are, Phil. I tell you, that fourth quarter was about an hour long, as best I remember. I, it, I didn't think it was ever going to get over now we're seven minutes from the end of the game. State ahead, but uh, State, that is, driving goalward and getting a big lift on this. Lee Jukes pass. I'm not sure uh, what happened to us there, whether we missed the, the coverage or, or what, but we sure let that guy look like he was out early for practice. Now, this is a new quarterback uh, for North Carolina State. He has great speed. He, he really makes a great play here to get in the end zone. We had him trapped back there. 
I believe the young man is a freshman. Darnell Johnson, the freshman. So it's 44-31, and they are about to execute a perfect onside kick and get the ball back. Look at that. Well, this is uh, the ball never hit the ground, and, and of course our people stood there like that. we were dumbfounded. And instead of we can fair catch that football, you have to certainly think quick uh, to do that. The quarterback's fresh, as you can tell. And our people are tired. He makes a great play there. This runs right around us. Looks like we're standing in concrete now. First and goal. Big play coming here. There's uh, Ken Hardy. I saw Ken Hardy make a lot of big plays all day. And I think he's played one of his best football games that he's played uh, since he's been at Auburn and maybe inspired us a little bit. Here's another big play in the end zone by James McKinney. Uh, breaking that pass up. Third and goal now. We've got to keep them out of the end zone because they'll only be six behind if they score here with still a couple of minutes to go. Another big play by McKinney. McKinney almost had that interception. I think he was upset at himself that he didn't intercept the football. Fourth and goal. Of course, they're going for it. Here well, comes the rush. There's uh, Frank Warren making the big play. Uh, Tim Wood in there also. He hadn't played. He's just coming back off of the elbow dislocation. I think that saved the football game right there for us because they were still had a chance at it. Coach Bo Ryan, who's an excellent football coach, has done a great job and a good friend of mine. And, uh, of course, there's not much you can say after a game like that, but needless to say, we were very proud of our football team for, for playing hard and winning. So we'll be back with a scattering report on Vanderbilt in just a moment. And Carl Velker and, uh, had his camera there. And let's pick up the action now as we see Barbara Mandrell become a football player. Character presentation that you would like to make. Barbara, we appreciate you so much at Auburn for what you do for Alabama Sheriff Boys and Girls Branches. We appreciate you coming by to see us at the dormitories. We enjoy the show. You're now number one. Okay, Coach, uh, is she a whiteout? Well, quite a generous lady. She came by the dorm here and visited with us uh, before the concert, took some of her time. I think our, our players and even maybe some of our other people, our coaches, uh, enjoyed it too. But uh, we really appreciate it. I think it was a highlight of the meal. There's old Gilbert I Sellers, believe he's a country uh, music fan. Smiling from ear to ear himself. <laughs> uh, Ken Hardy there, uh, Larry Cannon. Uh, Larry looks a little bashful. <laughs> uh, she's she's quite a lady, quite a talented lady, and uh, this was, a, I think, a big occasion for all of us. Uh, I imagine it was, and I understand it was a fine show, and, of course, uh, the proceeds of the show on Friday night, very well attended in the Coliseum, uh, goes to the uh, Alabama Sheriff's Boys and Girls Ranches uh, out of the good graces of Barbara Mandrell. Coach, uh, I saw a lot of young uh, faces, new faces on the sidelines over there. You have some recruits in it. We did, Phil. We had, uh, I think, uh, eight official visitors uh, to our campus from all over the, uh, the southeast and uh, fine young football players, and we, we hope it was a good weekend for them. I think they enjoyed the football game and the hospitality, and our people do a great job of entertaining them there, and we're very proud to have them. Hope we'll get some of them. It, was, it should have been an interesting game for them. And Certainly, <laughs> if you like offense. <laughs> if you like to see folks cross the goal line. Well, the next opponent is Vanderbilt at Auburn next Saturday. The Commodores have yet to win one this year. Uh, they have a new coach, new system, a lot of enthusiasm. I talked to uh, one of their assistants uh, Saturday, and he said, nobody's down and out. We're, we're <laughs> Auburn Football Review with head coach Doug Barfield. Welcome to the Auburn Football Review. Yesterday, Jordan Hare Stadium, Auburn defeated Vanderbilt 52 to 35. Coach, if you like to see folks cross the goal line, you should have been at Auburn yesterday. Well, that was a lot of excitement. Uh, if you <laughs> like offensive football, Phil, a lot of points scored. Uh, we think a few too many on the other side, but uh, that's something that uh, we, we can do something about it. We don't need to fret about what happened yesterday. Uh, 
Uh, I was proud of our team for winning. I was proud of all of them, really. I, I don't think we played as well as we could play, but if we could, we wouldn't have to practice, and uh, we could just stop. We can't do that. I think uh, we've got to push on. But our offense, uh, of course, didn't have the ball, really, with 57 plays, uh, kind of an amazing output uh, per play uh, for not having the ball anymore. They scored that. too quick. Maybe we did. I, I don't know, but you certainly can't tell them not to do that. And, uh, they're, they're hitting their stride, I think, and now we've got to get to playing together as a unit, hopefully, as a whole team. I, I did hear some comments about concern, I should say, about the Auburn defense, but I think uh, looking over the uh, stats, it should be pointed out that uh, they gave uh, great field position on the second and third Auburn touchdowns to get that lead out there. I think so. They complimented each other there early in the game. It looked like we, we had the game... Uh, Sort of wrapped up early, and maybe we had a letdown. We can't afford to do that. We just we, we can't do that against uh, good football teams. And maybe we learned a, a valuable lesson. But at least uh, let's say this: if we come out of it uh, with a win. I'd rather improve and correct uh, from a winning standpoint than I had a losing standpoint. Okay, it was uh, something of an offensive show yesterday, and we'll get into it in just a moment after this word from South Central Bell. Another beautiful day, Jordan Hare. I see Aubrey the Tiger's got him a new method of transportation on the field, Coach. Have you considered riding on? Aubrey never ceases to amaze me, Phil. <laughs> and he's exciting, and uh, hopefully he's stirring up a lot of enthusiasm in our students. We're going to meet Aubrey up close a little later on in the program. Good crowd on hand, and uh, Auburn uh, gets started very well right here. I don't know how you could get uh, going on the second play from scrimmage any better than that. Coach. Well, there were several great blocks and, and of course a great run James made a good cut inside and then uh, broke a tackle and cut to the outside I think we caught him uh, uh, napping a little bit on that play uh, we ran it on a quick count and they weren't ready on defense of course that's a good way to get started okay the Auburn defense played very well early stopping Vanderbilt's first series when Ken Hardy along with Edmund Nelson and Marvin Williams got to the quarterback Van Heflin for a nine yard loss so Vandy had to punt from there and Auburn will get the ball headed goalward again. This is the third play of the second series. Cribbs running the right side. Have you seen a guy have a finer day than that, Coach? Well, Joe Cribbs probably yards per carry had his best day. Uh, he didn't get the ball that much. Uh, really, none of us did. We didn't have it that much. Here's a little guy that I thought did a great job. That's uh, Charlie Trotman throwing to James Brooks on an inside crossing pattern there. Uh, Charlie played uh, with a handicap and... Uh, did just handle the, the football well. Every, I think every time he was in there, we scored. And uh, that's a tribute to his leadership and, and running the football team. There he is. That's uh, the second touchdown. Eight minutes uh, into the game, Auburn has put another one on. Now, on Vanderbilt's next possession. There's old Ken Hardy again. Tremendous uh, pass rush. And, uh, we, we almost uh, got that football there. Certainly would have uh, been a great, great play. But causing the fumble was a great play. Here's the punt. Joe returning the punt. And which never got started at the wall, but he did all that on individual effort. He was close to breaking it all the way. So Auburn has it at the 29-yard line of Vanderbilt after that good run back, a great place to start. Charles Thomas is the quarterback. He had to quiet the crowd when he entered the game, Coach, so they could hear the signal. There was a little uh, enthusiasm there. Charles had a good week last week and uh, came back and, and certainly did all right uh, yesterday. He's, he's coming. He's improving. There's a good throw and a great catch by Mark Robbins on the sideline did a tremendous job to keep his feet in bounds. Some good running in here by Ed Dubose, the fullback. Watch him here. Big Ed uh, breaks the tackle there and told him if he'd just get his head up, he'd score. He's coming around, coming back into his own. Another young running back here, George Peoples, striking inside to get it down to the goal line. George is running hard. Uh, George is getting better uh, every week. He's going to be a fine football player for us. Here's Charlie Thomas, play action and then throwing into the end zone for the touchdown to James Brooks. Well, we had two people open there, and certainly people haven't been, they've been defensing our run out of this power eye formation. And nobody covered the pass at all, and we've got to take advantage of that some and let them know we will do that. Well, with just 12 minutes gone in the game, Auburn's defense has given the Tigers field position twice, and they've uh, made good uh, use of it. 21-0 Auburn now still in the first quarter, but Vandy's beginning to get on track now. Vandy's running a, a trap, a trap option on us, and uh, really after they established some things, they really made us look bad. This is what we call the outside veer load, the G load, and their big quarterback, Heflin, just 
carrying a lot of folks. He makes a good run here early to get them down into scoring position. Left tackle's holding on to Ken there. He had a pretty good grip on things there. <laughs> Van Heflin was injured right there, falling on the ball and did not return to the game. Three plays later, they cashed the drive after the good running of uh, Heflin. And here they go in for the touchdown to make it 21 to 7. We made it a little tough on the goal line. Our goal line defense uh, played good. We just let them get down there too much, I think. Uh, didn't contest them out in the middle of the field. They're about to get the ball back on this play. Charles Thomas going for Byron Franklin. Overthrowing. Oh, we, we were going for post right there and going for the home run. Maybe we got a little anxious. Uh, that was a good tackle over there by James Brooks, I believe. On, it was, yes, it the, was. Uh, interception, but that was fortunate that those things will happen. Here's a well-executed play, I, I thought. The bootleg uh, screen, and certainly they, they did a great job of executing that. And caught us on the wrong side of the field. Only good pursuit kept us from scoring on that play. Here's the pitch to Mordecai, the SEC's leading rusher, and he was clotheslined there by Clifford Tony, just short of the goal line. Guy has tremendous speed, uh, Phil. Sure does. They finally get it inside there and score the touchdown, cashing the uh, turnover. Auburn at this point has uh, had a little dry spell. They need a big play, and that's just about what's going to happen on the this play. Beginning at the 20-yard line, after the touchback, look at number 20, James uh, Joe Cribbs go. Well, that's great uh, running. It's just fine downfield blocking. I think Joe made his cut here, and that fellow had the angle on him there. He would have gone on in. He had a couple of those situations. <laughs> he wanted to score. He was a little uh, upset at that. we got to give our folks credit. There's James Brooks blocking for Joe, and uh, our offensive line, I think, is, is getting better and better. If they continue to improve and Rusty Bird, keep them well, there's Rusty Bird. I think Mark Robbins is down there. Uh, not, he was careful not to clip in great position there, and Joe made his cut back off of him. That guy cut across there, number 42, is from Athens, Alabama. You know, man, we tried to recruit. He had great speed. He had the angle on Joe. So it's down inside the five, and then, uh, as would be uh, expected, Joe Cribbs <laughs> carries it in for the touchdown, pushing the ball in the end zone there. He was actually short of the goal line, but before he went down, he put the ball into the end zone for the touchdown. Heady play. Vandy won't lay over, though. They put together another good drive. Big play. This Whit Taylor to Preston Brown's pass. 35 yards down to the Auburn 12. Great speed there. They've been throwing the, the out on us out there, and we jumped it a little too quick there, a little over-anxious, and uh, he threw the out and takeoff. Frank Mordecai nice showing great speed outside. Tackle on our, our corner out there. He came inside, and suit didn't get out there to help we've got to turn that play in this is Mordecai on the pitch and scoring each team exchanged fumbles the rest of the way of the half time ran out with the Tigers driving so at halftime it's Auburn 28 but Vanderbilt has come back to score three times we'll talk more about that in a moment after this word from our sponsor you should get one of these visit a South Central Bell phone center store Perhaps the most rewarding of all programs of the Cooperative Extension Service is youth activity. Who would start at quarterback because of the knee injury to Charlie Trotman? He did play, but I noticed he ran the ball only twice. Well, we had to change things a little bit uh, as far as our offense field and how, how we were doing and what we were doing as far as Charlie. We didn't want to put him in a running situation. We didn't run many options with him. I think only once or twice he was forced to run the football. We really didn't want that. We'd hope to get the pitch. Uh, but these were adjustments we had to make, and then we felt like when Charlie Thomas came in, we would go to the uh, option game, and that would give us a great change of pace. So this is what uh, dictated our decision. They played uh, Charlie, uh, Charles Thomas uh, pretty heady. They uh, cut down on his ability to uh, keep the ball. Well, they pressured from the corner, uh, and they came from both sides, and, and we had to adjust to that a little bit, and we didn't get a couple of checks in there that we normally would have. And, now we'll get that worked out, though. We'll get back into the film now and see some of the Auburn band and also talk about uh, the situation at halftime. Uh, I'm sure the Vanderbilt people felt very good. They'd scored some points, and uh, you don't like to give a team like this a chance to get the confidence up, do you? Well, if you encourage them, Phil, that can be dangerous. And I felt like we were encouraging them at the time, but uh, certainly we couldn't lose our poise and, and panic. We had to make some adjustments and, and keep going. 
Jarvin Band on the field. Great uh, weather for uh, spectating. I don't know, it, must, it may have been a little hot on the field, but another beautiful day at Jordan Hare. Uh, Auburn will be uh, on the road for a couple of games now, but when they come back, I should think a lot of folks will want to see this tremendous offensive football team. Uh, Vanderbilt opened the second half. That's Terry Potter getting a first down. Turnover coming now. Taylor throwing for the tight end. Watch this pass interception. Well, this is a great play by Johnny Green here. Johnny's uh, improving every week, and he makes a great run back of this play. Go to the near sideline. We get a couple blocks, and uh, we're going to score. Uh, he puts us in great field position. Down to the Vandy 15. Quick cash in of the turnover coming right here. Freddie Smith is going to hurt to his teeth. Well, that's some good encouragement there. There's a we wasted a blocker. Our guard and uh, fullback picked up the strong safety blitz. And this game's cut inside. Just a replay of the second play of the ball game. We, we don't spot. need but one guy to do that. But that's good blocking. We wasted one of our blockers. But it's good cut. Well executed uh, sweep play. Second TD of the day for James Brooks. 11 carries for him, 135 yards, and he'll be way ahead in that all-purpose running that he leads uh, by such a wide margin in the conference. Vanderbilt comes back on the next possession with a long drive. Potter uh, running here, stopped by Ken Luke on a good tackle, you'll see, but he gets a lot of yardage. Well, we, we look confused on that, that play, the, the trap option, and Ian let the guard off inside of him. They come right back with it. Our corner squeezed that play, but they... They cut down our inside pursuit there. Ken Luke again making a big hit. Ken Luke uh, that's a pretty good uh, hit there for lock up. I think that might have been when he bruised his shoulder a little bit. Looked like the quarterback was out early for practice here. We, we, we covered everybody but the quarterback. Nobody took him. Now watch the Auburn defense. It's third and goal as they get inside the five now. This is the play Frank Warren wrenched a knee on. We'll talk about him a little later on. Uh, but he's there. They're stopped short there. Now fourth and goal at the one. Watch this. Well, that's pretty good uh, penetration there, Phil. And, and then we had some folks uh, standing there to back him up. And which, uh, I think this uh, this goal line stand and interception ought to give us some encouragement there on, on defense. We just need to develop consistency. This could have been the longest play in the in the history of football, <laughs> Phil. And uh, I think. This guy had an angle on Joe, and he had to make a cutback, and that uh, slowed him down. But it was a great run, and he broke out there in the clear and certainly uh, took us out of a hole. It's just an inside play off our option, and they are stunning, stunning themselves right out of it. Great way to get out of a hole, Coach. Uh, yes, it is. That's their all-conference strong safety, uh, Myrick, I think, who had the angle on Joe. And he didn't tackle him, but he slowed him down enough to, to get some help. Auburn could not uh, continue to move the ball, so on fourth down, George Patella comes in and hits a 40-yard field goal. Might uh, come in. Uh, George is, seems to be in the groove. Now he's kicking the ball well. If he continues to, to do that, uh, there's just no telling uh, what he can do. Here's their load play, and I, I think our end was for playing that wrong. He's giving himself up, and that's some of the poor tackling right there. I think a combination of that was deadly. That was... That was Whit Taylor, the uh, the quarterback, making a good run, almost 50-yard run there, and they get right back in things here early in the fourth quarter. It's 38-28 now. Neither team could move on their next possession. Now Vandy has it, and Frank Mordecai can't handle this pitch. Ken Hardy stays home, makes a uh, good that play here. Greg Zip, I think Ken Hardy covered two fumbles. Uh, he, he really caused that bad pitch and, and then covered the fumble. Okay, first and 10 at the Vanderbilt 27 on the turnover. Joe Cribbs getting five there. James Brooks and Joe Cribbs in the backfield. Thomas giving it this time to the little guy. He gets four. He got folded back there. I was afraid he might have been in some trouble there, but we're, we're just staying with basic stuff here and running up inside. Joe jumped outside here, and I'm not uh, really sure why. He was determined to get in the end zone then. On his third touchdown of the day, that tremendous ability to move laterally right there as he kicks it outside and then outruns the defense. Just a tremendous play. Watch here at the goal line. He wants to score, Coach. Got a good uh, got a downfield blocker down there. I believe that was Robbins. And oh, my. He got in his way, and, of course, uh, Joe just bowled him over and went right into the end zone. Good running. So Auburn has jumped out to a big lead now. 
But Vandy comes right back, going on top now, completing a 43-yard pass here to the tight end. This was a severe pass, and sort of some uh, what we call uh, too deep coverage. Nice defensive end, and I went to sleep on that particular play. Put him in good field position again. This is the old crossing route on the goal line with a tight end crossing against man coverage. He got picked off in there. Just, uh, I don't think, lackluster play right here by defense. So they're within 10 again. Now, they've tried to kick it away from James Brooks all day and have successfully to this point. Now you see why they were trying to. Well, uh, we, we were really in an onside kick receiving formation, and James almost uh, breaks that for, for a touchdown. So here goes Auburn now. Look at the guy go. This might have been the greatest run of the day, Phil. I believe it was called back. Uh, it was? For uh, holding, but uh, it's only really a holding feeling I think we've had, but it was a great run right up inside, the same one as Joe broke on the goal line just a few moments ago. So it's called back, and they're backed up and having to punt after the long penalty. Is, uh, Bill Grisham down there in great shape. Uh, Johnny Cheeks, young freshman. Good punt coverage, good punting by Skip Johnson. Vandy on third down and eight now. Stop for no gain. Hey, big tackle uh, there by Evan Nelson. Uh, a little better there. He acts like he's going to be aggressive. Come after that thing instead of sitting waiting on it. They're going for it on fourth down here. Backed up. There's a good pass rush. Uh, he had that excellently defended. Greg Zip getting to the pass today. There's young Bob Berry in there. And, uh, this is Chester Willis from games with Georgia. They're in man coverage and Chester, I think, was determined to get in the end zone. We really weren't concerned about scoring in. We just wanted to run, run the football and run the clock out. And I guess you can't blame Chester for, for wanting to score. That was a good move and, and he headed to the end zone. Good run. And so, some great blocking uh, and a great run there by Chester Willis and the Auburn Tigers roll to their fourth win of the year. An awesome offensive display, averaging eight yards of play, 52-35 victory over Vanderbilt. We'll return in a moment to talk us to Albie the Tiger and to talk about Auburn's next one, that old-time rival Georgia Tech. Okay, uh, if you've been to Auburn, seen any of the games, even watched the color shots uh, here on the Auburn Football Review on uh, Sunday, you've noticed uh, a new character on the scene at Auburn. He is Albie the Tiger, who in fact is Barry Mask, a junior at Auburn who beat out several other students for the right to be Albie, and we talked to him the other day. I've got some bigger things in mind, uh, some uh, more than just the regular uh, ball game stunts, uh, a lot of publicity with the university and alumni relations, but uh, I'm really waiting for the Alabama game because I've got uh, a few good stunts for the <laughs> Alabama fans. Do you ever get to uh, communicate prior to the game with some of the characters for the opposing school? Right. At the Southern Miss game, uh, they had a golden eagle that was dressed up, and I... I saw your antics with <laughs> I asked him, I said, would he come down there and we could do some annex? And uh, he did come down there, and as we were doing them, I, were, I was telling him what to do. And I said, uh, now I'm going to kick you, and I want you to fall down. And he said, well, <laughs> what if I don't want to fall down? I, I told him, one way or another, you're going to fall down. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't run into a hostile uh, mascot yet, huh? Not yet, but if they're How was Smokey? Smokey? Well, Smokey uh, was a girl. And oh, is that right? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> But uh, I had a good time with her. <laughs> she likes Tigers. <laughs> okay, I had linebacker field, so we maybe better get ready. <laughs> maybe, yeah. Coach, uh, young Charles Thomas, we got to remember to call him Charles. It's, it's Charlie Trotman and Charles Thomas. He kind of burst on the scene last week, and uh, I guess it was a busy week, a lot of adjustment for him uh, with all the publicity and whatnot. Well, we'd like to shelter him from a little bit of that, uh, Phil. He, just a sophomore and uh, he's really coming along and, and has a ways to go and he's going to continue to improve and we can keep uh, keep his feet on the ground which i'm sure we can uh, i think he'll do a fine job for us we chatted with uh, charles uh, the other day and we asked him first how he spends his summers i work when i'm not training you know, i do more training than i do work <laughs> well you, you do know. have a job yes what is that united partial list be loading trucks, you know, and which yeah. is a real physical job and just keep me in condition, you know. So um, I really 
feel good out of it, a lot of good out of it. What size town? How does Douglasville, Georgia, compare to Auburn? Well, um, it's, it's a little bigger than Auburn. Yeah, Too it's, close to Atlanta, huh? Yeah, it's on the, the outskirts of a big city, so, you know, it's a lot of happening running in and out of that little town. And um, it's real lot, you know, a lot of homestead-like town, you know, and, um, and uh, there's real good people around. You, you wanted to switch from defense to offense, right? Yes, sir. How did that go? Well, um, Coach Nix, uh, he really, he really asked me the question, you know, during the spring, did I want to go back to quarterback, see how, you know, how things work out. And, you know, I was all for the idea, and, and things worked out pretty good for me. So yeah. far, so good. <laughs> so far, so good, Coach. He's a fine athlete, and he's a fine young man. He, he's real coachable, and say he's going to continue to improve. He's going to get to play with uh, some of the uh, some of his old friends probably next week because this is a battle with Georgia Tech. Well, he may not be too friendly this week. I'll tell you that, Phil. <laughs> Georgia Tech has been a traditional rival of Auburn's. They uh, had a tough time in uh, Knoxville last Saturday, yesterday, but uh, of course, uh, uh, often you can have a tough time in Knoxville. Well, there's a couple of people who've had a tough time up there this year, Phil. Let me say this about Georgia Tech. They do a tremendous job over there. They start slowly, it seems, every year, and they improve. Uh, Coach Rogers has said this is the best defensive team he's ever had. Uh, certainly, they're, they're really uh, believing in their defense, and now their quarterback, uh, I think Kelly's going to come along. He's we have a some passer. tape of him throwing the football uh, right excellent, here. excellent uh, passer. So it's going to be going to be tough. Here he is, I believe, throwing against Notre Dame. And, uh, Please, uh, William and Mary, Coach. Uh, that William yeah. and Mary, well, that's quite a bit of difference in, in, uh, in Notre Dame. But <laughs> they played well against Notre Dame. In fact, they, they could have beaten Notre Dame very easily. And if you allow him to stand back there in the pocket and take time, that's what he can do right there. He has uh, some excellent receivers, one of the fastest guys in the country in Chadwick. I think the strength of their football team uh, is their defense. And they have an aggressive, uh, swarming defense. And, that was great speed back there. And you know when Michael Harris is on the second team that they've got some speed on defense and uh, for whatever the reason. So we, we respect Georgia Tech. They have a fine football team. Football Review with head coach Doug Barfield is brought to you by South Central Bell. Welcome to the Auburn Football Review. Yesterday in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, before the largest crowd ever to see a Wake Forest home football game, the Deacons defeated the Auburn Tigers 42 to 28. Coach, that was a shootout. And a, and a hard one to lose. Yeah, well, it was 42 to 38, Phil, but Did that I doesn't make much difference. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's who's got the most. That's what counts. Uh, yes, it was. It was a wild offensive uh, battle. Uh, uh, really, two two different uh, games, I think. The first half, we should have had the game out of reach. We had a couple of other opportunities. And uh, one was stopped by a fumble. I think one by a penalty, or we ended up getting a field goal. And then at the half, we, our players felt like we had to come out if we put one more touchdown on the board, the game would have been over. Uh, we were in process of, of doing that, and uh, uh, I believe a, a holding penalty cost us uh, about 40 yards, really, is what it amounted to, and then put us out of range, and we ended up kicking a 52-yard field goal, kicking at one and missing it. Uh, I felt bad for our players. Uh, they played hard. Uh, they put a lot into the game. Uh, Wake Forest was a good football team, especially on offense, and maybe they're saying that about us. Uh, because there wasn't a whole lot of defense uh, either way. Mistakes cost us uh, the ball game and the final analysis, and you can't, uh, you can't continue to get penalties and, and turn the ball over on fumbles and win against a good football team. Do you think the uh, five pass interference calls in the first half may have taken a little edge off the uh, defenders? Well, it, it got me a little gun shy, I know that. And uh, we, we had uh, concentrated all week on being aggressive, going for the ball. We felt like we were playing the man too much, and we needed to go for the ball more and get some interceptions. And uh, I'm sure it, it got them a little bit of gun shy because there were a lot of yellow flags out there early in the game. 
Okay, we will get into the first half of play in just a moment after this word from our sponsor. Grove Stadium, Winston-Salem, North Carolina, jam-packed. There were 3,500 people on the grass seats out there. First time they've ever filled that stadium up, and then they go with about three or 4,000 out there. Easily the largest crowd ever to see a ball game, and, of course, those folks are really excited about the football team up there. They were riding high, Phil. They were enthusiastic. Uh, it was hostile territory, uh, no doubt about it. It didn't seem like Alby was too worried about it, but I thought our players performed uh, well under the situation. This is opening drive and uh, Charlie pitches out on the option play of the weak side to James Brooks with good downfield blocking. Uh, an excellent game, excellent execution of that play. Little man had 117 yards rushing yesterday and, and, and a lot of uh, all-purpose yardage. There's a good throw Great to Brian throw Atkins. By Charlie Trotman complete to Brian Atkins. That's uh, George and Leah Maria's son from Birmingham. Good throw and good catch. Second and seven at the 42 now, this time going to the other side to Byron Franklin. Right here, Coach, two penalties, a five-yarder and a 15-yarder. It takes uh, the uh, momentum away for a moment, and George Portella kicks a field goal. Well, it certainly does, Phil. We, we were driving there and, and executed well, had things under control, and uh, that, that put us in, uh, well, out of, out of stop of drive, and we end up going for the field goal. Wake Forest mixing the run and the throw now. Jim McDonald is uh, their fine running back, and uh, it gives them good balance as well as their throw to have a good running back back there like him to run the ball. Uh, Mike Dougal's a fine, uh, fine runner. That's him again. Harris Rayburn in the ball game for the first time in Harris, several weeks. Harris uh, played hard and played a lot yesterday. This is uh, one of their favorite uh, little tricks to dump the ball off their backs, uh, the fumble the ball there. And alertly, our defense uh, recovered it. They're going after the football and got us a uh, turnover there in great field position. And Auburn's going to cash the turnover immediately on one of the finest runs you're ever going to see. Watch James Brooks. There's some fine blocks out there on the corner, and it's just great uh, second effort and determination in running. He was just determined to get in that end zone. We'll see the replay now. Some good blocks downfield. Claude Matthews and several others. Callahan had, had a block uh, downfield. Joe Cribs, Callahan, Matthews were running the... Weak side sweep downfield. There's Robbins. There's uh, Brooks running over one, two, three. Comes another one, four, five. He's in the end zone. This uh, tremendous second effort and uh, determination on that run. Ten nothing yeah. lead early. Auburn has jumped off to a quick start. Now Wake Forest with the ball on their next possession. This is Venuto throwing for Kirby again. James McKinney will be defending here. It was a good play by James. We tipped the ball. Had a lot of tip balls. Our people going for the ball. They were more aggressive and had a lot of opportunities and near interceptions. Get up and rush that passer. We gave him too long. There's one of his backs, I believe, Kirby, that he dumps that ball off to. The new is a fine quarterback with a lot of poise, a great arm, confidence, and good smarts in throwing the football. Going to the tight end this time, there was a uh, pass interference call, the second in this drive there. The play and the interference call were about at the same spot. Now the 36, looking for Bumgartner this time. Johnny Green uh, made a great play on that. I thought he could have intercepted the football, and uh, I think he, if he had just clutched it in, he, he would have had it. Now, they fooled us on uh, the draw play a couple of times. We were so intent on rushing the the passer and getting after him that we created lanes, uh, rushed lanes, and they, they gave it to the guy on the draw play. Here's another big play here. I thought it was a great play uh, in the end zone by McKinney and Green going for the football and call for pass interference. It tends to take some aggressiveness out of your players back there. So getting the ball at the one-yard line on the pass interference call, Venuto sneaks it in for their first touchdown, making the score at this point Auburn 10. Wake for a seven. Auburn couldn't move it, and Wake takes over again on the 29-yard uh, line after the Skip Johnston punt. This is to Bumgardner and a good throw and catch. Well, he had too much time and, uh, to throw the ball, and we gave him too much room to maneuver. That guy's a, a fine receiver. They're going for the deep ones now. There's Johnny Green making another big play down there. Going, going after the ball. Made some interceptions. They intercept that football. After a motion penalty and a six-yard loss, they get close to the first down on this pass completion, but are a yard short of that. They get the first down, though, uh, on the next play, and then they run the reverse to Duckett, who takes it down to the 15-yard line. 
We had this play defended pretty well, and Zach Carter was out there and didn't make the tackle. Face mask penalty coming up calls uh, aids the uh, Deacons inside the five, and then on third and one, Venuto throws to Mike Mullins for the touchdown. So Wake has come back to take a 14 to 10 lead after the point. Still in the first quarter. It was a long first quarter. Auburn at the 20 now. After the kick, James Brooks running on the corner here. Eight. James broke that play to the outside. It was designed as a cutback. If he used his speed and quickness to get to the outside, they were over pursuing. Third and six, a couple of plays later, watch Trotman throwing good to Mark Robbins on this play to the Wake Forest 31-yard line. It was great protection. Charlie zipped the ball well. Mark's got a lot of room. He's got deceptive uh, speed. It makes a lot of people miss him. Drive stall there, so George Portella came in and was true again on this time a 45-yard. So early in the ball game, score is 14-13 Wake Forest. George is kicking the ball about as well as I've ever seen him kick it. Sure he's is. hitting it good and he's extremely accurate. Wake with the ball. Here comes Kirby again. He had trouble holding on to the football. Oh, we got to get our heads up and tackle him. There's a ball pops loose. Fumble. James McKinney comes up with it. James McKinney covered that fumble. James made uh, some big plays for us. Here's Charlie Thomas in that uh, quarterback. And Charlie responded well. He's looking for his receiver. He wasn't open. He pulls it down. And Runs with it, which he's very capable of doing. 22-yard run there. Now at the four-yard line. Watch this play. Charlie Thomas is going to score. Cutting up inside. Option play, and they gave him a little room there, and he's strong enough and, and big enough to get it in the end zone. Going for two. A lot of motion to the other side, and then Joe Cribbs runs back to that uh, to the right side to score. Well, we had uh, used motion the opposite way, and... Uh, Rather than to the side of the cause, we had an option to pass a run, and Joe just took it right in there. Another turnover coming. Great interception by Freddie Smith. Freddie Smith made the interception. Now, this is where, Phil, I thought we, uh, you know, we should have put this, put this game on out of reach. We turned it right back over here. We missed a block and got careless, and, and we fumbled the ball back to him. Uh, well, they're just uh, no excuse for a couple of fumbles, I think, kept us from two scores, and that was a big difference in the football game. Four plays later, Venuto throwing for Bumgardner. They like to go long to him. Too much time back there. You know, we're letting him stand back there, and it's hard to cover him that long. Now two plays later, Venuto for Kirby out of the backfield, his favorite target on the day. He caught ten passes. A screen pass there. He faked it one way and screened the other way. Tackle. We've got too many people now. Not using the hands, not locking up, tackling. At the Auburn 45, going long for the flanker, Kenny Duckett. Duckett ran a post route and just beat us. We were in man coverage there. And it was just a great, a great route and a great throw by the quarterback and Duckett. McDonald jumps into the end zone for the touchdown. The point try was wide. Auburn retains its lead. The score now is 21 to 20 with five and a half left in the first half. Auburn on a 70-yard drive now. Here's a good a, pass. Here's a great uh, throw, a good route. There's uh, Trotman throwing the out route to rest the bird and making a good gain after the catch. Here comes the touchdown pass at the 33-yard line. Charlie Trotman hooking up with Byron Franklin. Well, Charlie gave him a little pump in the void there and threw it deep. Oh, this is well thrown balls you'll ever see right down the, the sideline in the end zone. They had trouble with your twin set uh, on your receivers, didn't they? Well, we felt like uh, the way they adjusted to it, we had to try to take advantage of that. And, and we would like to have a tight end there to block, but uh, we kept the defense spread out, and that's what we wanted to do. So, in the second quarter, Auburn has moved out to a 28-20 lead. Wake's next possession. Here comes Venuto throwing, and Duckett catching. This is a play, I believe. We had a fumble in there. Uh, uh, really, the ball was never caught, I don't think, completely as a rule of fumble, but it was knocked loose, and, and McKinney intercepted the ball and caught it in the air, and it turned it down to 30. Another big play by our defense. We go right to work here with uh, Joe Cribbs running the sweep to the outside, and that's an excellent run. Good blocking on the corner. Now, Joe seems to dribble this ball, uh, it looked to us like coach, well, and he, he kind of pulled it right He it, definitely. It's the same option that we scored on before. He just bobbled it. I don't think it ever hit the ground, but uh, when Wake saw the ball it. pop loose, they all 
went for the ball, and Joe just walked into the end zone with it. We had a perfectly executed play other than bobbling the pitch. Okay, there's a fumble here. Another great opportunity, but Auburn draws an unsportsmanlike uh, penalty. Now here, he will toss the ball up, and, and they get him for 15 yards right there, Coach. Well, he's supposed to hand it to the official, Phil. Uh, of course, you know, when you change balls, uh, it's a little difficult. I've seen him come off the field with it, but we'll have to get that straightened out because it kept us from scoring probably in the, in the field goal and those things that I say was the difference in the ball game. Well, right Auburn had to begin half. there on first and 25, and they took the field goal, a third of the half for George Portella, and that is the halftime score of 38 to 20. Coach, with the missed opportunities, it might have been even more. Well, it, it should have been out of reach, Phil, but, but it wasn't, and we still had some football to play. Okay, so we'll come back and talk some about the, the halftime situation after we take this pause. Stretch the imagination, Phil. And I, I told our players this, that uh, Wake Forest uh, had a second-half football team. They were capable of scoring a lot of points uh, because of the nature of their offense. And I felt like what we had to do was to come out and establish ourselves and get one on the board. We were to receive the kickoff, and we felt like if we'd take that thing down there and score, that we'd have control of the football game then. And, and this is what, uh, what we had in our plan to do, and it just didn't get done that day. One other point, uh, in, in a game like this, uh, uh, emotion is a big factor, but it seemed to me as tired as they were with the crowd and everything, it helped them down toward the end of the ball game to play probably beyond themselves. They, they played well. They had a lot of enthusiasm there, and uh, of course they, I think, handled the crowd well and the way things went. Uh, certainly they would have been off the quiet, I think, had we not fumbled late in the game there. Okay, we start play in the second half now. Auburn comes out with the ball after the kickoff. They had uh, a little uh, skydiver exhibition there. Very entertaining at the, the half. Coach, you didn't see that. I didn't see that either. I, oh, I was glad I didn't play that guy. Well, <laughs> tell you. He looked pretty quick, huh? <laughs> Here's good. Trotman. This play will be called back. So this was a, a key big, play. big gain for us here. We're, we're down to the, about the 16-yard line and uh, first down and goal about a 25 yard run and we get a, a penalty that uh, calls that play back and we come right back with this one and this was a beautifully thrown ball uh, birds got the ball for a touchdown or inside the 10 and it uh, goes through his hands that gives you an idea maybe what kind of day it was for us so, so two uh, key factors right there in stopping the first auburn drive and then bumgardner is catching here on a 31 yard pass play and this seems to fire them up a bit two plays later this is uh, Venuto going to Duckett, the other wideout. And a good play. Two plays, uh, first and goal now at the eight-yard line, looking for Bumgardner in the end zone. Harris Rayburn coming in to defend here. Got some pressure then. If we get some pressure and, and get after those receivers like that, that's the kind of defense we need to play. We didn't, didn't put enough pressure. There's a draw and a missed tackle. Oh, grabbing, he's in the end zone. Good run. So the point here makes it Auburn 38, Wake Forest 28. They move to within 10. Now, Auburn on the attack again. Charlie Trotman is the quarterback. Makes a great play here. Turns the corner, keeps his pitch man there, and is going to pitch to him now. Joe gets four or five more yards out of the play. Yeah, that's an excellent option play by Charlie. We're, we're moving again here, and uh, we get a, <clears throat> a, a bad play. One of the few negative plays that their blitz gave us. Uh, during the game somewhere coming right here uh, along here and I think this action. was yeah this was right here we, we handled that blitz well we we don't lose the ball there but there was a negative play and uh, we had worked real hard against their pressure and their blitz to try to avoid that and, and that never, stalls the drive nevertheless that's right Phil that was a key and right here was a key there we missed that guy for a loss and that was and on third down. Third down, and we get a, a pass interference here, and I think it was pass interference. I don't think there's any, any question about it. Uh, James made a great play, and he just had his uh, arm on the receiver. Here comes the draw. And this was a, a quick trap up the middle and a, and a big play for them. Two plays, and uh, Wake Forest is now down to the one-yard line. Inside, trying to score. Pulls up short. They hold him out there. Second and goal now. McDougal. It's like any time they got in trouble, Phil. This is the play they ran. Uh, nice quick pitch. Quick, quick uh, sweep to the back side, and we, we did not do a good job of containing that. So 2.50 left in the third quarter, and Wake has closed it down to three points now. 
Now the crowd really going wild here. They stop Auburn on the next possession. Venuto is tossing again. Good to Kirby. 24 yards on this play. We had a near interception there. Johnny Green uh, just uh, about a half a foot quicker, I think, would have had that uh, interception there, and we, he'd have been all alone out there. Venuto throwing. Good to Bumgarner. 18 yards to the four. They're driving again. Now it's third and four after Auburn held them a couple of times. McDougal's going to sneak into the end zone for the go-ahead touchdown. Running back to the other side and going in untouched to make it 42 wake Auburn 38 early in the fourth quarter. There was a lot of football left to be played, Phil, but it certainly gave him a lot of momentum uh, coming back like this. I thought this Charlie Thomas running this misdirection option there. Charlie came in and took the ball on the, on the 20. And, uh, our team, I thought this was one of the finest drives that I'd seen in a long time. This was a loaded option. And great run by... Charlie, they on third down. Wasn't third and nine. He made 10 yards on the play. This was a clutch drive, and uh, we took it right down the field. He had a couple of good uh, runs and a couple of good passes. Uh, just, just great execution. We're using up the clock, and we're moving the football down in scoring position. That was a good run. Now at the 15-yard line, James Brooks hitting up and turning to the outside to get five. We're right here. We're in, we're in uh, great shape, uh, Phil. We, we're doing just what we, we need to do. I think this is inside the five here. And right. We, we should have really scored on this play here, and, and uh, our fumble play right there would have never happened, uh, I think, as you see there. And, and everybody feels bad, and we're all sharing it. Charlie comes out uh, really too flat there and bumps into our fullback. I think we're going to go on into the end zone there. We've got some folks knocked back out of there. Now watch this play. They they rule that this is not a fumble. Well, that, that ball came out before we hit the ground. I certainly feel that would have been a, a big play for, for us to fumble and, and get it right back. And uh, But it just uh, it wasn't uh, in our in the cards, I guess you'd say, as the ball comes loose right there. And when he's searching for it, and everybody else is too, and that's been a big play for us, but it, but it wasn't to be. Now, at this point, Frank Warren hasn't played all day. You put him in the ball game, Coach. Well, we were we were just trying to, you know, we, we needed all the help we could get. Now, Frank really wasn't able to play and, and shouldn't have played, but we, we were fighting to win there, and everybody wanted to get in the fight. Uh, so they hold him down and then have one more shot at the end of the game. 2.30 remaining now, and Charlie's going up for it all here to I Byron Franklin. I don't know Franklin. if this play might have done it. Byron had gotten in behind him, and the ball was thrown a little short, and, uh, of course, that was a uh, rule and interception and, uh, and the fumble, and, of course, definitely uh, might have been an interception. I think the, the we'll look at it again. It, uh, uh, then uh, they ruled that uh, it, that the ball was still uh, uh, playable after he had fallen on the ground, which I couldn't understand, really, Coach. Well, it's, I can agree with you. It might have been an interception right, right there. Right there, but he's down. And he's down, and then the ball comes loose. Certainly, he was uh, more say down than the guy before there. But it was it was one of the things, the type of things that happened a lot all day. And as I said, that didn't decide the ball game right there. Uh, we decided the ball game earlier. So. They are able, after this play, to uh, run the clock out uh, and uh, preserve a victory. It is a tremendous victory for Wake Forest. They are ranked in the country, of course, as you know. Uh, they move it out on one play and then run the clock out for the, uh, uh, to take up all the remaining time. And here's a, a tired coach, and uh, you're getting the explanation on, on why they were able to run the ball back at this point, I think, once the coach. Well, I, I just wanted to know what happened. It wasn't clear to anybody, uh, I don't think, in the stands anywhere what happened. And we, we wanted to know, and he did offer us an explanation, and certainly they explained it to us. I, I'd like to congratulate Wake Forest and their coaching staff for uh, a win, and, and certainly say to our people that uh, the season is in front of us. It's a tough loss, a disappointing loss, a, a bitter pill to swallow, but uh, we've got Florida coming in. They don't have any sympathy for us, so we, we better get to it's the uh, November drive, Coach, the four SEC games. Now, Auburn is 5-2 and two going into November, and Florida's coming in. Uh, I know they've lost some of their players this year, as we know the Brantley boys, but I know one they've got, and we've got a little tape here of him, and I remember him very well. Well, they've lost year. some, and everybody has, Phil. I think certainly we're, we're uh, included. This is Collinsworth, uh, their fine receiver. I think he's one of the best uh, in the conference. This was a, 
Play when we had a blitz on last year and the quarterback ducked under him and, and threw to him and you can't give him that much time either. He's a great uh, receiver with great speed, a talented athlete. So. They're playing a lot of young guys now with Charlie Pell down there as the first year coach. I hope that our people remember uh, the trip we made down there uh, last year and, uh, and now they're coming back to our place. It's a big game for us and I want our players to know and, and all of our people that this is a this is a stretch run, and this is a big game for us, and uh, we've got to get ourselves ready for Florida and put the one uh, yesterday behind us. Coach, I want to also say that uh, we need a lot of folks in the stadium the next two weeks at Auburn because this is one of the most entertaining football teams you've ever seen, the, one of the most explosive football teams you've ever seen. You need to come see them. I just want to say Well, that. I thank you, Phil. I, I, we need all of our people there. <laughs> Football Review with head coach Doug Barfield is brought to you by South Central Bell. Welcome to the Auburn Football Review. Yesterday, before 58,000 at Jordan Hare, the Tigers defeated an old rival, the University of Florida, by a score of 19 to 13. Coach, uh, the defense has been taking their lumps, and they had a good day, a uh, day that made the difference yesterday. Well, I tell you, they pulled it out for us, Phil, and we were very pleased with that. It was a great uh, day, a great crowd in Auburn, a great rivalry. It was good weather for football and, and a tough, uh, hard-fought football game. And we were very pleased to win. We were very pleased that our defense uh, came through with four interceptions, as you saw, and and about three more uh, drop balls that I know Johnny Green feels bad about. He made great plays, got his hands on them, but dropped them. But nevertheless, uh, we were proud to win. I said before the game, we'd take a one-point uh, victory. Uh, we'd like to have more, but uh, we're very happy to have a win. A lot of people uh, did not know that Florida was as good a defensive team as they are. They figured to be a good defensive team from the beginning of the year. Florida's played excellent defense. They've had trouble moving the football at times, and they, I think... Uh, personally, they're as strong as any defensive team we've played this year. The thing that I think probably they did, and this is speculation, is they had an open date in the Tulsa game that they probably began to, pair, to prepare for Auburn. Uh, I think this was a game they want to win. Two of our staff members are now on their staff, and, and I know they put a lot into this game, so it, it makes it uh, even more sweeter. We'll get into the first half of play in just a moment after this word from our sponsor. Big crowd on hand to greet the Tigers after they've been on the road a couple of weeks. 58,000, a little better than that. Uh, there the, there's the Gator and the Tiger uh, coach. Good guys. Had a lot, of, a lot of stuff going there, I guess, on the sideline. I think our defense was uh, really prepared to play. They'd been maligned a little bit. and <laughs> Coaches pulled them together, and uh, certainly we were real pleased to see them perform well. Mistakes in the first quarter. This is the first mistake that uh, Florida made. Watch uh, Edmund Nelson strip this ball away to give Auburn the ball. Well, had a reverse. Ken Hart had missed him. Uh, we had a couple misses. Edmund Nelson created a fumble. And I'm not uh, sure who that you covered the football that field. Uh, didn't get it, Coach. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, that was a great, uh, that was a great play. Anyhow, we weren't fooled by the play, but we come right back and Florida gives us a bad play. I don't know how the ball got away from. Uh, Charlie Trotman there, we had the counter option, we had penetration, and it was just a game of errors there to begin with. Neither team uh, wanted to take advantage. We had a good drive going and got a penalty. This is good coverage down here. There's Johnny Cheeks, young freshman from Gainesville, Georgia, covering the punt on our uh, Comanche punt coverage team. 
So Auburn's going to get something out of this one. First and 10, that's James Brooks running with it. 11 yards to the Florida six. Brooks and Cribs did not have the great day yesterday, but attribute some of that to a fine defensive unit out of Florida. I certainly think so. The one thing that we didn't do well is we got down here and we were stopped there with a corner pressure coming in. You can see how they turn their tackle in the four technique. There's Joe going hard uh, for the goal line. But we just didn't light up on that uh, down near the goal line and go ahead and stick the ball in there. They swap into the field at the quarter, and now Joe tries to go on third down and can't get in there. So the decision is made to go for it on fourth down, Coach. Well, that's right. We just thought at this stage we were down there that close that we could get in there with a sprint out. And I think Charlie hesitated a little bit had he, had he turned on uh, to begin with. We had an option to pass the run. Charlie Thomas would have gotten in there, but he didn't. That was a big play for Florida. A little... Uh, Demoralizing, I guess, for our group early in the in the game to not get in the end zone. Florida comes right back uh, throwing the football. They were alternating the quarterback. Here comes the interception. Got some pressure there. On the post route, that's Ken Luke, junior from Murphy High School in Mobile, Alabama. Makes a good return here. I'd hoped he'd get on in the end zone, but that's a great interception. We we kind of faked the coverage and got in the three deep and. Ken was sitting there waiting on that post right in the middle. Okay, Ed Dubose gets it down close to the goal line with a good tough run inside. They asked for the fumble here, but it was ruled down. Second and goal at the one. I think so. We're just uh, driving them out there in the middle, and which is really probably what we should have done earlier. Cribs can't get in there. Now it's third and goal. This time he's going to score. Joe Cribs will pick up his 12th touchdown of the year. He's the leading scorer in the SEC. And fourth in the nation, there he goes in. We'll show the replay on that and show some of the blocking up inside on the play. That guy right there is a fine linebacker. Little is. He's one of the better linebackers you'll see in our conference. There's a good block there by Foster Christie and Brooks and Dubose to get him in the end zone. Florida was tough. They were a big and strong physical football team and made it really tough on our, our offense. As they did so often after an Auburn score, they're going to come back now and put something together. That's Oshab, who's been pressed into service. He's the throwing quarterback. And to his favorite receiver, Chris Collinsworth, who had six catches on the day. Third and two right there. He's hitting Kurt Garrett. Good That's to the Auburn 44. Play. Uh, we're getting some people hustling around the football, but we're missing too many tackles. They were checking the little slant pass there. And then we had a blitz on, and they hit their back, coming out of the backfield a couple of times on us. Thought they did a good job of uh, recognizing that and executing. First and 10 at the 20 here. Here's their outstanding freshman running back who's going to be good. Darrell Williams, certainly a fine player. We, we knew he was a good player. We tried to recruit him along with a lot of other people. Big play coming here by Ken Hardy and Ken several others. Ken Hardy coming in there real hard. Frank Warren. Frank played some yesterday. He's still not full speed, but he gave us some help. Oshab looking for Faulkner now. Almost an interception there. Well, we, we had a lot of people get their hands on the football. So they have to take the field goal as the Auburn defense rises up and holds them again. I think that was especially significant. I feel that we made them uh, go away there with three points, and it helped us a lot. Two field goals were missed the rest of the second quarter, and that's the way it ended at the half. Hardly expected. It's 7-3 Auburn leading at the half. We'll return in a moment after this from South Central Bell. We hadn't had in, uh, in a week or so, and, and we didn't light up and take advantage of those things. And I, I'm not sure why. And I think maybe it was, uh, it was partly our fault. I'll take the blame for that, that we were a little, little tired, a little lethargic, a uh, lack of days on offense. We weren't really uh, motivated and excited, and that's our job to get them that way. And we've got to go back and do that this week. Florida was uh, really had uh, not a lot of defensive surprises just seemed like they were doing a good job. But. I think they just outplayed us, Phil. They, they just uh, good hard knocking and uh, pursuit, gang tackling, getting to the football. Quick Auburn turnover, com quick turnover coming, an opportunity for Auburn right here. James McKinney is about to make a fine uh, reception right here. You saw earlier. James McKinney looked like uh, covered his man. They were trying to go to the back out of the backfield. He, he recognized it, got up in the air, and made a great interception. On the turnover, Auburn at the Florida 40. Charlie Trotman down the line, but he can't turn the corner. Oh, we're just not quite making the block, and, and it's everybody there. We're close, but but uh, no cigars. We're just just missing. Right there, you see uh, James Brooks, good hard running, good hard tackle on the corner. 
making most of that on his own. Brooks again on third down here, but he can't quite well, get the we, first. Well, the quarterback just beat us up inside, and uh, we didn't have a chance. We thought we'd run the option with the short side. Now, here is a, is a heck of a kick by George Patella. Tell you what, that was over 50 yards. He really hit that thing nicely, and I think it gave us a big boost there to begin the second half. 34 at this point. George Patella is now the all-time career field goal kicker in the Southeastern Conference. Florida comes back on the next series, gets something going. That's third and seven with Oshab to Faulkner there. Now the big gainer coming, going to the fleet Chris Collinsworth. He's an exciting Chris receiver. Collinsworth is a, is a great player and a great competitor. We got Johnny Green turned around. He lost the ball. He was, he was in excellent position on the coverage, but just got turned and lost the football. Here it comes again, the interception. There's Harris Rayburn, a fine senior linebacker from Andalusia, Alabama. Harris has been back the last two weeks, and he was in the right place at the right time, intercepted that football, and stopped the drive there. We were real fortunate. Another missed opportunity coming here because Auburn's going to give it right back. Looks like well, Rusty never really got that ball. Coach. Uh, we thought it was a completion. It was a quick out, check two against man coverage. I'm not sure that he got control of it, but uh, apparently he did and, and fumbled it. They used this play very well. The yes, the they pull. did. Uh, they, I, I'm not sure they were reading it. I think they were blocking the give because every time they tried the option, they had problems with it. But they did a good job there, as you see right here. And the quarterback... John L. Brown, that's a freshman, makes a great play there. He made a lot of people miss him. It's either great running or, or poor tackling. Okay, now they're first and goal here. Look at that gang tackle. That was a lot of pursuit. I think the key play was to Zach Hardy over there getting penetration and, and stopping the veer lane. And Frank Warren helping out. Now it's second and goal at the 12. They're going to sprint out around the short side. We're getting a lot of people around the football. Please, that's Zach, trip them up there. Third and goal at the 8. Now he's looking for Chris Collinsworth in the end zone. He's covered now. Watch uh, Darrell Wilkes come out and make a play. Darrell Wilkes saved a touchdown there. It was excellent. Uh, Wilkes had his receiver covered. Uh, Darrell's a freshman from all around Phoenix City. He's come in and uh, really played some good football for us. So rather than the go-ahead touchdown, they have to settle for the field goal here, and Auburn retains its lead by a score of 10 to 6. We're still in the third quarter. Auburn begins deep in the hole here after a clipping penalty on the kickoff. Joe Cribbs running inside of the 16. That's the first down. Now it's a third down and three. Watch this play. Well, we, we've been throwing the out a lot in this situation, and Charlie faked out to Byron Franklin and uh, he ran the takeoff route, and certainly it was, uh, the ball was thrown a little short. We had him out there in the open. He made a sure catch, and it's a big game and a big play for us. Okay, we see it again now. Charlie Trotman throwing to Byron Franklin, and... Uh, it was really an outstanding day for Charlie. He was 7 of 11 for 108 yards and a touchdown. Coach, one of the one of the keys to victory. Excellent passing. He's really been throwing the ball well the last few weeks. And uh, if I had uh, one criticism of myself, uh, it certainly would be that we should have thrown some more early in the game. So Auburn can't move, and they have to settle for the field goal, but uh, the little man puts her through there again, and that uh, moves Auburn out with 3.54 to go in the third to uh, a 13 to 6 lead a touchdown lead now the Auburn defense won't let the Gators move so Amos is punting and that's Cribs making the fair catch the resulting penalty there gives Auburn the ball at their 45 I don't know why they were pointing at us they really just crowded him and uh, got in in the way we come right out and of course Charlie hit Franklin on the read route after faking the run and we're, we're moving again James Brooks now Running to the 42-yard line, picking his way inside. Yards is tough. In there. We weren't uh, playing quite as well as a unit as we have been. Charlie's throwing the ball well. We're close to going all the way on that play. The void route, as we call it, the rusty bird. We end up here, and, uh, of course, we, we go for the field goal and miss it. And Florida's offside, which is one of the, I believe, this is, uh, That's it. was the time here, which is one of the cardinal uh, sins. In, in the kicking game. They come with a misdirection option. They, they really played that well. The end waited. And Second goal now. TD coming. Great play here. It's an excellent throw, an excellent fake, an excellent catch. There's Mike Locklear, senior tight end from Fort Payne. And the way Mike jumped there, you wouldn't think his shoulder would hurt at all, would you? That's, right. That's Auburn's, uh, Trotman's sixth touchdown pass of the season. Coach, he's, he's throwing the ball much better in the last four or five games. Well, I think he's... Uh, Developed his confidence. Of course, his arm is good. He hasn't been running as much, and maybe that's, uh, that's helped him. Plus, I like the fact that Charlie Thomas has come in and played a good bit. It, it's made uh, Charlie better. 
Florida comes right back. Oshav throwing for Williams this time. He's no good. Now at second and ten at the Florida 31, Oshab again going for Garrett. This crossing pattern you're about to see here was one of well, the it, problems. It bothers us some. It sure did. We're getting a little pressure on the passer, but he's coming in there behind our linebackers in front of our deep people, and uh, they completed that pass two or three times. They've got to do a better job. They hurt us right here on this play, and I thought the guy was going for a touchdown, and Freddie Smith just ran him down. That was supposed to be a 9-8 sprinter, and uh, Freddie caught him. Certainly a big play. First and 10 at the 11-yard line now. Oshab going for Collinsworth. No good. Covered by Bob Harris. But the touchdown is coming here on second and 10. Oshab for Faulkner as the data score. Well, we've got some pressure there. We're close to getting him. And we had man coverage, and our strong safety came up inside there a little bit. And the end made a fine play. So it's fourth quarter now. Auburn is leading by only six. Pressure now the rest of the way on the Auburn defense. Auburn begins at the 20. James Brooks comes out with 13 here. I thought moving out the field position here, Coach, was important too. Well, I, I thought our team showed a lot of poise here, Phil. We didn't play well most of the day, but uh, here we go. We come in here and when we had to have it, and we kind of sucked them up and, and came on out and made some first downs and ran the clock some and controlled the football some at this stage of the game. The motion penalty caused a misfire here. Auburn having to punt, and Johnston kicks it into a stiff win. That's uh, only a 26-yard kick, but against that 20, 25-mile-an-hour an win, it was difficult. Five plays later, Gators fourth down. They made a fourth down, and then Oshab has it in the air at midfield. Uh, incomplete there. Second and 10 at the 48-yard line now. Look at the Auburn defense get after him. Well, he saw pressure there, and it kind of fused him. So I think the defense did an excellent job of mixing up the defenses and oh, getting some pressure on the pass. Throwing every down now. Good defense here. And so well, Auburn Johnny Green coming. had that ball, and uh, he played it excellently. Came in front of him and had it and, and just dropped it. It was one of those near misses. So the Auburn defense holds him once, but there's still plenty of time remaining in the ball game. Well, it's a pressure situation here, Phil. I, I think our team needed this. Uh, you, know, you hate to say, well, this is, you hate to get them too close, but we hadn't had a close game in a while, I guess, since a week ago. <laughs> and we <laughs> needed one, but we needed to win one. There's some pressure on the passer. Uh, again, great play by Freddie Smith, a near interception. Had a lot of people around the football. 2.20 to go now. Throwing on every down. Here he comes out with it again. That's an excellent catch by the Florida receiver. That's put in. Did a fine job again on the crossing pattern. We had people around him, but we, uh, he came up with a play. 147 left. He's completing the quick ones now, and the Auburn Tigers holding on, trying not to give him the big one. Run the clock. Here it comes. Well, here's a great play by freshman uh, Darrell Wilkes again. He's, he's going to be a, just a fine uh, player. He started the game, played a lot, and you noticed he Gave the ball to the proper guy there, the, <laughs> the official, official. <laughs> uh, which Good we're thinking. supposed to do. But uh, he's running right with Collinsworth, and he sees the ball. He didn't lose the football, and he's just on it, comes back on it, makes the interception at his highest point. Florida gets the ball back for one more uh, series after this, and uh, here I thought was a great play, Coach. Here's Gilbert Settlers throwing that ball right back there to Skip Johnston and getting that punt out of there under pressure. There's 20 seconds left. They, well, they block a, it as a touchdown. That was a real good play. Now, here's a, something that wasn't too good. The old Gilbert uh, <laughs> didn't see the fair catch signal. Of course, that's uh, we gotta, we got to be able to do that. There's Marvin Williams pressuring. Get after him, Marvin. There you go. Great play. Didn't give up. So the Auburn defense turns back the Gators twice in the fourth quarter when they had to to preserve the sixth victory of the year for the Tigers. Uh, they, are, they are six and two now, ranked 20th, and probably will improve on that in the next AP poll. Uh, we'll be back in just a moment to talk about uh, game number nine that's coming down the road after this. A good game, yet they won one. Now, that's important to do something like that occasionally. Well, I think the fact is we can get uh, every, everything play, uh, working together. Offense one week, our defense responded this week. Our kicking game has been fairly consistent. Now if we can uh, improve our kicking game a little bit and get our offense and defense going together, then, then hopefully the best is, is yet to be. And certainly we're going to need it to be that way. Before we take a look at Mississippi State, uh, we want to uh, show a few scenes on the sidelines. There's a lot of things going on in a football game, a lot of things you may not uh, get a chance to see watching the action on the field, but there are a lot of the roles being played out. 
uh, along the sidelines around the bench area because people have responsibilities and things that are vital to the game. And Coach, if you'll uh, explain a little bit about what's happening here. Well, this is the warm-up, of course. Yeah, that's Coach uh, Alex Gibbs there, a fine offensive line coach. Uh, came to us from Ohio State. He gets that. That's Coach S.C. Sullen. He's proud to be the secondary coach this week. Mississippi <laughs> State, uh, he does a fine job. There's uh, Coach Jack Burns, one of our part-time coaches. Jack was at uh, Arkansas, and he's doing an excellent job for us. He's an old Florida grad. Coach Dave Beck, coaching our running backs, trying to get a point straight there with a couple of his backs. Uh, there's Coach Gibbs uh, making an adjustment, a blocking adjustment on the sideline with uh, our offensive tackle Claude Matthews there doing uh, the course of the game. While Florida has the football, we have to get some of these things done. There's our fine trainer, I think the best in the country, Herb Waldrop, checking with Ken Hardy, who's got a you know, bruised back, a couple of strained knees, and one of our assistant trainers uh, taping there during timeout. Here's our uh, defensive uh, strategy group, uh, Coach Underwood, Coach Buddy Nix, on the phone to Coach Sullins upstairs, and that was Ken Burnett, our All-American linebacker, who's also on our staff. There's a the defensive Brain Trust upstairs, Jack Burns, and Ken and Coach Sullins there, S.C. Sullins. Obviously, defense looks like a very, uh, a very sincere uh, <laughs> moment there. Here's uh, Coach Tim Christian uh, with his arm folded there, probably told us to call this play here to our tight end on the goal line, and it was a completion. So Tim will take credit for that, and I'm glad they all do an excellent job, and they're all an important part of the whole. I know those guys up in that uh, little uh, outhouse booth up there were cold because that wind is really whipping through. It was there. cold. We missed uh, Coach Blakeney and Coach Davis down there. They were on the sideline. And That's uh, unintended, of course. Uh, we just didn't get a shot. We, we don't want to slight them. We're very uh, proud they're part of our staff. Okay, Mississippi State is a wishbone team. They uh, they did as good a job defensively on Alabama as anybody's done this year yesterday, Coach. Well, I want to say this about Mississippi State. I said before the season they'd be in the top echelon. They had as fine a personnel as anyone that we played last year. A great, big, strong uh, defensive front, uh, speed. They've had some trouble with some of their running backs being hurt, but they've got a fine defensive football team, and apparently they're controlling the ball on offense. And the best receiver, I agree with uh, folks that played them last week uh, in America. Probably. Let's take a look at them on uh, tape. This is the Auburn Football Review with head coach Doug Barfield is brought to you by South Central Bell. Welcome to the Auburn Football Review. Yesterday, before a near-capacity homecoming crowd, the Auburn Tigers held off Mississippi State by a score of 14-3. Another big day for the Auburn defense. Phil, it was a great day for Auburn, really. A, a tremendous homecoming crowd. Our people were out in force. They were enthusiastic. Uh, we are really appreciative of uh, that enthusiasm and, and the crowd's uh, involvement in the game. I was very proud for our seniors. All of them, they're undefeated at home this year, and to win their, their last game at home and their homecoming game, uh, really my heart just goes out to them. I, I am so proud for them. They did a great job, and our whole team and whole coaching staff uh, put a lot of effort into the game. Uh, the governor uh, was there, Governor James. Uh, he was honored as a distinguished uh, engineering alumnus. Came by the dressing room after the game. I understand uh, Senator Bush was there, or George Bush was there, and I, I didn't see him, though. But a lot of people there, and uh, Sally Jacobs, the homecoming queen, just a big day for Auburn and a great victory uh, for Auburn. It certainly was. You knew that Mississippi State was a good defensive team. They proved that. It was difficult to move the ball on them. Phil, they, they had one of the uh, biggest and strongest and quickest defensive fronts that we've seen in a long time. They played the 4-3, and they had excellent speed in the secondary. Uh, we had uh, trouble moving the football, but a lot of other people had. Uh, Florida State, Alabama, uh, right on down the line. Tennessee, uh, Florida. And unfortunately, we didn't get the ball. They kept the ball a lot on us with their wishbone and uh, just grinding it out. And uh, we only had the ball 54 offensive snaps. And we stopped ourselves on one key drive there in the fourth quarter, I believe. It, it had a chance to put the game away and didn't. But uh, our defense held, and, and we're very proud of that. So you're going to see in just a minute uh, highlights of uh, really a, an, an unusual type game for Auburn. A slug it out uh, uh, game, not a lot of scoring, just a lot of good tough football, and we'll be back to see that in just a minute. 
Homecoming at Jordan Hare. A lot of spectacle, a lot of balloons. The uh, Jefferson County Auburn Club had uh, that big balloon uh, there just outside the stadium and the orange jerseys, Coach. Well, there's nothing uh, magical about the orange jerseys, Phil. A lot of people ask me about that. Uh, and I told our players the jerseys wouldn't win the, the game. The people in them would. Uh, but they wanted to wear them, and uh, we thought that it was a good opportunity. There's uh, Ambassador Bush, one of the uh, members of the homecoming crowd. And uh, George Patella, the SEC's all-time leading field goal kicker. He shares that with Rex Robinson right now of Georgia kicking off. And look at this tackle, Coach. These are, I believe, two freshmen, uh, Johnny Cheeks and Vernon Blackard, that I, I noticed there. And uh, Johnny Cheeks from Gainesville, Georgia, and Vernon Blackard from uh, Gainesville, Texas, I believe, just below the Oklahoma line. Two freshmen. State launches a 17-play drive here, getting first down on third and five on this play, but they were running inside with the bull, big fullback and then to the outside and, and mixing it very effectively. Well, they did. Uh, the quarterback, uh, Brown, did a good job on the option, and uh, they broke a couple plays on us. We, we had a little trouble getting adjusted to it uh, to begin with, and we, we were a little bit afraid of that. You can see there we've got a misread, and the guy taking the wrong man. But there's number 31. I want to say something about him. A lot of our defensive players, but as I understand it, uh, Freddie Smith made 22 tackles yesterday, and if that's not an All-American performance, I've never seen one. Uh, but our whole defense played well. There's uh, Freddie again and Bob Harris, sophomore from over in Atlanta, Georgia. Making the play. It's third and goal now, and uh, a mix-up in the backfield, so the drive is stopped inside the 10. Dana Moore comes in for a 27-yard field goal try. They've been having trouble with their kicking game. He's going to miss this one, so Auburn holds them out on the first drive. But it was a long, time-consuming drive. Well, it sure was. I think it was a little over six minutes left in the quarter when we got the football, Phil, and when you didn't have it any more than that, you needed to do something with it every opportunity you had it. There's... Charlie Trotman running a misdirection option. Uh, Charlie made some great plays for us yesterday. Uh, did a good job running the offense. He hurt his arm early in the game a little bit. There's James Brooks on the dive play. We call that the hard dive action, trying to run into the bubble on their 4-3 defense. Auburn on its first possession of the game, and Trotman is throwing for Byron Franklin, perfectly timed at the side. Right close there. We've got one foot in, and uh, we're moving the ball well. And, there's Joe Cribbs. Joe got some tough uh, inside yards. He, he ran did. real hard yesterday. Now it's third and five at the state 35. Auburn putting together a good drive. Here comes the state rush. Uh, well, completion here to Cribbs for a big first down. He made it on his own there, getting the needed yardage for the first Great down. Great second third. effort by Joe. That was a little delay coming out of the backfield. And Charlie hit him real well. And Joe ran some good yardage. State uh, blisters here on this play and ran... Uh, I believe they're free safety and middle linebacker through and forced us to go for the field goal. Patella tries a 53-yarder. It is short, so the first quarter ends up scoreless. Nobody can uh, get anything going, although both teams did have fairly promising drives. Now second quarter of play state, second possession in Auburn territory at the 38. There's a, there's a fine defensive play by our whole uh, left side there. That was Zach Hardy, I believe, that made the play but the inside people got him we, we got some rush on her and this is a great play by Darrell Wilkes who was uh, beaten on the post route by Marty McDowell he reacted and, and knocked the ball down he made two or three tremendous plays Darrell was covering McDowell all afternoon and I suppose coach she did uh, uh, an acceptable Frank, job uh, he sure did uh, we were very pleased with, with his performance There's Frank Warren rushing the passer and uh, catching him from behind and that stopped that drive with that play. Auburn now launching a 16-play, 80-yard drive, going for the seven. Cribs on Joe third and Cribs. seven. That is good, tough running uh, and, and good uh, line charge by offensive line. Pitching to James Brooks late, and he's showing the outside speed. Charlie made several excellent reads Charlie, yesterday and uh, pitches. Coach. Handle the option uh, real well. He just runs our offense uh, real well. We didn't light up the scoreboard but here we had a pass call he pulled it down and I think this play uh, really was a key play in our drive he broke a couple of tackles and made the first down we had some alertness downfield and picking up blocks there's Joe and several others down there blocking Charlie that was, that was a great play by Charlie Trotman watch it again now he looks like he is tackled he wants to, this is a actually he had a, the pass call and he pulled it down and he saw he was covered and 
pitch man was covered. He didn't have a chance there. And for that 79, must weigh about 260. Brooks getting a block to help him. There's Joe out front there getting a block. This great effort by Charlie Trot. So, a big play there, the 14-yard run, keeping the drive alive. Here comes another key Trotman run, this one on third down and eight. Heading up inside and going 21 yards. Here's the inside veer. Charlie kept the football and found the crease and got up in it. He's getting his leg back. He's been injured about three weeks. I know he'll be sore today, but he made several key runs on this drive. And close now, Mr. Joe Cribbs takes over, getting some tough inside yards to keep the drive going as they get inside the 20 now. There's Cribbs again, hitting up inside there. Joe, Joe's down. close to finding a crease there several times, and uh, he was trying to run into that 4-3. They adjusted some. He just made that on his own right there. Key, getting the first down. Key first down play. Okay, first and goal at the 9. Charlie Trotman running the option play, getting it down to the 6. Touchdown play coming. They were taking our, our pitch away on that, so we decided to go to the back side here. We were faking the power play and coming out and running the option, and they all gathered up inside, and uh, Charlie got it out to James Brooks for the touchdown. Watch the play from ground level now. Fake inside, then pulling the defense to him and making the pitch. And that guy can turn it on. James had a good day. I'll there goes you. another jersey, Coach. <laughs> Well, we were tearing some of them off there. I think we ran out of tearaways on those two guys, and we didn't want the clock stopped at the end, so we made a change later in the ball game. State comes back on their next possession, attacking the corner again, getting the fleet Stanley Howell loose down the sidelines on this play. Well, we had no pressure uh, from the corner. We, we laid back, and their arc blocker, that was Clifford Tony, I believe, running him down down there. Clifford has great speed. If he didn't do that, uh, we got a touchdown. Once we got him stopped and we got back in business, there's a good uh, penetration there by Frank Warren into the mesh point and forced a, a bad play. And Ken Hardy made the tackle on the, coming from the back side. Third and 11, passing down now. Brown looking for State's top receiver, Marty McDowell, and Darrell Wilkes is back there with him. Just tipping that ball. Darrell got his hand on it and uh, tipped it away. Made a great play. Field goal try here. Freddie Smith gets his hand on it. Freddie uh, blocked that ball, and uh, for freshman, Darrell was not really sure what to do, but he, he wasn't sure he was going to get into the end zone, so he picked the ball up and advanced it. That was a good play. And had he broken that tackle, there was room out to the sidelines, too, Coach. Might have and he's a capable runner. State had one more shot before the half. Now at their own 43-yard line, Brown throwing for King on the screen. Well, they heard us on this screen pass a couple of times. Uh, we got some people out there then, but they made a couple of key first downs. Here comes the interception of James McKinney. Well, he was playing center field on this, Coach. He we saw we went in. to the three deep. Uh, we felt like they might come with a post route. And James intercepted the ball and got a couple of creases there. If he could have ever gotten his feet and gotten some steam going, we had an opportunity to make a good return. Now, that was a great interception by James McKinney. Senior safety from Southern Alabama. So Auburn has stopped them again, and they take a 7-0 lead into the dressing room at halftime. We'll be back to talk about that and more after this word from South Central Bell. Queen Sally Jacob. I believe that is she there. We will see. And uh, have you ever seen Aubie looking nicer? Aubie's really tail. dressed up, isn't he? Yeah, a little this one. <laughs> Special day. But uh, congratulations go to Sally Jacobs. Uh, there's Governor James crowning the queen. Presenting her with the roses, some of the other girls. It happens to be Robin Sheely, I believe, daughter of uh, Coach Dow Sheely. Yeah, really a young State. lady. And so, quite a day on the plane, and particularly at halftime, and uh, those uh, four quarters of football that uh, a lot of folks will long remember. We'll be moving back into the second half in just a moment. Stop Shakol on the first possession, and they go on offense with good field position. And they get something going, really, with Donald Ray King, another of their backs, going right here to the Auburn 44-yard uh, line before he's finally Missed a couple of tackles there, Phil, but I, let me give them credit for stopping us on that first series. But we made, uh, I don't think we uh, had the right things called, and certainly that was, that was my fault to get a drive going. There's Freddie making a great effort to get around people and making a tackle on that uh, same screen pass that they heard us with once in the first half. Now they're at the 17-yard line on a delay of game penalty. Puts them back a little bit. There's a great play. 
That's Freddie Smith and Frank Warren, uh, two fine football players on the defensive unit. They put in a second quarterback now, Gary Schaffhauser. He's trying to throw here and does, and a near interception. Harrell uh, had great position. He broke on the ball and uh, had the interception. I think Marty McDowell got his hand in, and he broke up the pass. Ian Hardy won't let that screen develop this time. Well, he put the pressure on quick, and we had some people out there this time. We played it much better. New kicker in the game now. Jerry Rye is in, and he tries a 35-yarder, and he kicks it through. So eight minutes into the third quarter, Mississippi State has put something on the board. It's 7-3 now in the third quarter, and things are going to get real we pressure really packed the rest tied, of the way. <laughs> tied it up now, Phil. There's a lot of pressure. Uh, you know, Mississippi State has been turning the ball over all four or five times the ball game. They didn't do this, this uh, for this football game. And, of course, neither did we. I think that was a key in the game that our people kept the ball, uh, didn't turn it over. We did not have a single turnover. And uh, that was very encouraging. I think a, uh, a great job by our offensive people. Joe Cribbs uh, on the crazy option now, and uh, or the pitch, or whatever that is. Good block on the corner by Brooks. A good pitch uh, by Charlie Trotman. The end was coming hard. We got the ball out there quick. And, uh, Joe got on the corner and made about 10 yards in the first down. But they close the drive down. Auburn has to punt. Now the pressure is really on the defense. Brown keeps it hit hard by James McKinney, one of the big blows of the day. That was a great play. Uh, pitch man stayed there and uh, read the pitch. There's a guy breaking loose on the counter play up inside. and looked like he was going to run through everybody. Howell gained 104 yards for the day for State. Third and six right here. And the rush gets to it. Good pressure on that pass. Uh, Johnny Green defending in the in the flat and uh, excellent pressure on the pass. I think that made the play. But a 15-yard penalty for a questionable late hit there gives uh, State new life. They get the 15 yards and keep the ball. Inside to Fred Collins there, their big guy. Not second and five. And Brown is running the option and getting good yardage. First down for State. You didn't take on that loaded block very well in Phil and get off of it. And 50 seconds left in the third. Collins stopped inside by Chris Martin there. Now it's second and eight. Brown is looking for Marty McDowell. I think he was open on this play, and Dan Dickerson just well, made a great might effort. have been. We had a pinch on, and our end was coming hard, and Dan went over the top. There's uh, Coach Ernerwood and Danny Skutak conferring there. We had a lot of critical plays on defense. Big third down and 11 play coming That's here. Good pressure. Good pass defense. Fourth down and 11. State going for a 52-yarder. Well, that was a long one, Phil. If he kicked that one, that would have been a great kick. It was uh, about as short as our 52-yarder was. And, uh, we got the ball in a pretty good field position. So the Tigers try to get something going offensively here. Good run by James Brooks. But in this drive, Auburn draws three 15-yard penalties and puts them too far back to make the first down. And Skip uh, Johnston has to come Bill, in. Bill, we had about back. 100 yards to go at one time. That was just terrible. We can't, uh, that was the only real bad uh, stretch we had. We had good coverage on this punt. They bobbled it and had a lot of people around there. Rusty Bird was down there. So they begin with good field position and another, trying to put together another go-ahead drive here. This is third and four at the 38, and King is just a yard short, but on two... Uh, uh, points in this drive. They're going to go for it on fourth down as they do there and make it each time. Just well, they were gambling uh, for the win. I don't uh, blame Coach Ballard. And, uh, they, they did a good job. They made about two fourth down Going for it on fourth down right here. Here we go again. Two critical. Uh, Nearly had off a defense. That ground. That Clifford, we're in good shape out there, and he just wiggled forward, I think, enough to get it. We, we had him uh, pinned back there. Third and nine on this play now. Darrell Wilkes has been like a shadow on Marty McDowell. This time, McDowell gets up and catches the pass. We had a curl right there. He broke in. All right, State gets an offsides here. They begin on first and 15. Watch this play. Well, there's great pressure. There's Zach Hardy on the passer. Uh, Zach Hardy from up in uh, Birmingham, Hewittown, Alabama. And that's good pressure. Zach getting after the passer. That was a great play, a big play. We had some other folks back there. Edmund Nelson and Edmund Marvin Nelson, Williams. Edmund Nelson and Marvin Williams right on top of the quarterback. So it's second down and long now back at the 37-yard line. So State is going to run it one time, try to pick up some of that yardage. Howell, he's the guy who's uh, really apparently the fastest back they have. Howell is fast. So we had that defense pretty well. It was good. Uh, made the pitch and reacted on the pitch. Third and long. 
Good defense. Now, good here comes the fourth defense. down. Play. Good play, and Darrell Wilkes make a good play. Three good plays right here. Well, Get Zach is, is right there pressuring, and there's a pass, and there's Wilkes again uh, knocking the football down. McKinney was there, Tony, but uh, Wilkes made the play. Marshall well, Riley likes Marshall Riley over there encouraging us. Uh, so it's 3.20 to go, and Auburn has stopped them again. They're trying to get something on the clock here. Right now, you're just hoping to run the clock out, Coach, and look what well, happens. You never can tell when we keep uh, running our basic offense. Watch this uh, move by Rusty Bird here. Great position. James set him up. Uh, Rusty didn't clip. Byron is protecting him and yelling, hopefully, not to block because he's out front. That was just a super uh, play right there. You see Mark everybody. Callahan there. Cribs make a block there. Phillips shielding down there. A lot of a lot of good blocks. On Iron Franklin. And he, here was the key, I think. Uh, James set this up and turned number 34 around, and Rusty uh, made the block. Just enough to knock him off stride, and uh, that's really all James needed. It was a great play that uh, put the game away, and I think added uh, extra spice uh, to the homecoming. Sent the old homecoming uh, faithful home happy, Gus. The Auburn homecoming fans breathe a little after that with only a couple of minutes left. They preserve the victory 14 to 3. That's Auburn's seventh win of the season against only two losses. We'll return to talk about next week, which is going to be a big game in just a minute. Have time very long to relax before you start thinking about Georgia, but knowing that you like a little country music, I want you to watch this now. If you're uh, if you're ever around the athletic dorm at Auburn, you're liable to hear from time to time a little picking and singing. Several players have guitars. Several of them, as you'll see, play pretty well. We corralled three of them the other day. Kip Green, Jerry Beasley, and Mitch Vickery over <clears throat> the Florida Gators yesterday to keep them in the uh, Sugar Bowl picture. Uh, Coach, uh, they are an improving football team, and it's obvious when they get excited, they play very well. Georgia is a fine football team, Phil. They have been all year. They've uh, had some uh, lapses and had some people hurt. Uh, That's a freshman there, Carney Norris. A great speed. Uh, this is Buck Blue, their fine quarterback, and uh, I don't know where this was, uh, Arnold or, or Lindsey Scott, but one of the other touchdowns was Lindsey Scott. This is Lindsey Scott coming here. He's probably the single biggest play man in, in the SEC. He can really turn tell you what, he's uh, very comparable to Marty McDowell. He catches the ball and he runs well. Uh, Georgia has everything rolling. Had a great recruiting year last year and playing a lot of young people. And uh, they're hot now. And, of course, we've got to go to Athens uh, between the hedges. They've got everything uh, going for them. And uh, it's a big, big game for us against a real fine uh, Georgia football team. In a game like this, field goal kicking could be a factor, and you got the two best in the league, uh, George Portell and Rex Robinson. Well, I, that, that's true. Both of them are fine kickers, and uh, Georgia's kicked well for us and Robinson well for them. And, of course, sometimes you don't want to get the idea that you rely on field goals, but it's great to have that kicker there and know that uh, they can get the job done. I tell you, time for the Auburn fans to uh, get behind the team. This is hey, between the hedges yesterday. Well, fortunately it was for us, Phil. A big, big football game. I, I mean, it was really big in all respects for Georgia. It was big for us. The crowd was there. The enthusiasm, uh, a little hostility over there, if you please. But uh, <laughs> Always a very is. classy uh, group, a great place to play, and, and a great traditional game. And our players uh, responded to the challenge. And I'm very, very proud of every one of them that went over there that had anything to do with it and, and all of our coaches because I think they really laid it on the line. And, and really, that's what college football, I think, exemplifies. And we're very proud of our team. It's been a lot said and written over the season about the defense uh, holding the offense up, the offense holding the defense up. It was a team effort for sure. Yes, it was, Phil, and, and people have talked about uh, individuals, and, and it's always good maybe to single out some people. Uh, yes, we, we have two backs that have both gained 1,000 yards, uh, Joe Cribbs and James Brooks already on one football team. But uh, there's some linemen had something to do with that. Our punter Skip Johnson five Tremendous. times for 46-yard average. Uh, put him in a hole to begin with. George Patella coming through uh, when we needed him. And Bob Harris, three turnovers on defense and just a great overall effort, I think, on defense to keep him out of the end zone. All those things together, a good kick coverage, uh, that, that results in, in a good performance and a win. A complete team victory, and a big victory it was, and we'll get into the highlights of it in just a moment after this word from our sponsor. Sanford Stadium, largest crowd ever to see a football game there. It's a beautiful place, really uh, almost a natural setting for football. If you allow me, Coach, a word I looked up in the dictionary, a pristine 
quality about that stadium. That's a great uh, descriptive term, Phil. And just a colorful crowd. Uh, their stadium is, is situated in a, in a pretty location, and it's a good place to play. Auburn had the ball first. Charlie Trotman checking off there. He got things rolling with this 15-yard uh, run to give Auburn a first down at the 37. Well, that's inside beer there, Phil. Charlie's reading and uh, pulling the ball. And get on down there, Charlie. We want to get you hurt there to begin with. But Auburn couldn't move, and Skip Johnston hits his first of five punts. And as you said, a tremendous day of punting. Watch this ball. It, it hits the sideline as if it had eyes. A beautiful, beautiful punt. And, and good coverage down there. And we... we Keep it out of the end zone, and then that's that's what we've been missing. And we've been needing some of that right there. Here comes the big play, first big play of the day. Watch Frank Warren, the left tackle. Frank whipped his blocker and uh, didn't go for the fake inside and tackle the quarterback, and really it wasn't a, a vicious blow. And there it was a safety, and a big play by Frank, and uh, really a tough break for Georgia too. Their fine sophomore quarterback Buck Ballou was hurt on that play. Uh, and a very unlikely looking thing, and he, he was out for the rest of the game. So they have to punt it on the next play, of course, and that gives Auburn field uh, position, and here comes Charlie Trotman operating on the option again. First down. They lost seven, though, on an errant uh, pass, so Joe Cribbs uh, takes the ball here. He assaulted him for 166 yards. Look at that. That's some speed. great running, and, and uh, <laughs> uh, Joe unfortunately tripped on his own man there. Byron Franklin. We were running the dive and making a cutback. And, I mean, that's uh, he's wheeling coming out of there and put that guy down. And there he's out there. And Byron, as you see, his foot <laughs> hit him there. Byron was trying to block for him and tripped him up. Or I don't believe anybody would have caught him on that particular play. On fourth and one now here at the 11-yard line, Georgia helps Auburn there by jumping offside, giving him a first down. Now it's first and goal at the six. Watch Cribb set up the touchdown with this run. Joe jumped through there pretty well. He's hunting that goal line, and uh, offensive line's coming off there pretty well. This is tough yardage down here. And uh, there he gets it into the end zone. Excellent blocking there. Uh, Ed Dubose, James Brooks, Keith Euchre on that side of the line. So Auburn has jumped quickly after the point out to a nine-point lead early in the ball game. And there comes the guy who's had some great days against the University of Georgia. Yesterday was uh, one of them. But they come back and get something going here. Georgia uh, came right back. You know, I, I like to say this, of course, Jeff Pyburn, their, their fine senior quarterback, uh, came right in and took right up where Ballou had left off. He's throwing the ball and hitting them. And there's a little uh, safety valve pass out there. We. Get some people around the football, but they move the ball consistently right down the field. We I doubt if Buck Ballou could have done better in the first half, Coach. Oh, I don't think he could. I don't think he could. They blocked us some. They're running hard. and Our defense is uh, a little the passive play. right now. We've got people pressuring him back there pretty well. We just got to get rid of the ball. That was a great pass and, and uh, really kind of a close call there. I don't know whether he ever had possession of that ball or not. McKinney was right there. Made a good play, and he just handed it off to the fullback and made it look simple. Huh? That guy is a former high school teammate of James Brooks, That's Jimmy Womack. Uh, Jimmy Womack and Warner Robbins. Yes, they were. Two fine high school football players. So the dogs get fired up after that touchdown, and they hold Auburn on the next series. So Skip Johnston is in there again, getting another good snap from Gilbert Sellers and booming one out of here this time. 57 yards to Scott Werner, who gets it back and gets about seven yards of it back. That's pretty good coverage there. We, we allowed him a little more than we've allowed all year on return, but uh, Scott Warner is an excellent uh, returner. Georgia has the momentum now. Simon runs it off tackle here. This play hurt us, Phil, a cutback play. We we did not do a good job of getting off our blocks, and Clifford Tony uh, there saves a touchdown, as you can see. And they've got uh, they're all the momentum going their way right now. Womack again. This time, Freddie Smith meets him in the hole. Oh, my, that's the way to... And that's the way to tackle right there. He was right in the middle of him, locked up real well, and he could get some help. Into the quarter, going the other way now. Second and seven. Simon can only get the 23 as the Auburn defense stiffens. Third and six here. Pyburn throwing. He hits Guthrie, but he stopped short of the first down, inches short. His knee struck the ground about two yards before he reached the 10. So it's fourth and one. 
And they're going for it on fourth and one. Watch the play. And he doesn't get it. That was a pretty good uh, tackle there. Pretty good defensive play. Our defense uh, rose to the occasion. I've forgotten just when that was, but that was another uh, key play in the football game. Joe Cribbs trying to run it out of deep in the hole now. Watch him kick it to the outside. Joe bounced the outside and showed his speed and running ability right there and his quickness. Now at the 34-yard line. Well, we were using three wide outs and trying to force them to spread out with us. And well, there's a great run right there uh, by James Brooks. He breaks through, and there's one guy that uh, has a chance to get him, and there's a little uh, <laughs> late hit there. I hate to keep commenting on those, but great running. They held us here, and I, I don't know exactly what happened here. Foster Christie thought that uh, the ball was wide, but he should have, of course, gotten rid of the football there. We misfired on a pretty certain field goal try right there. So Georgia is now on the turnaround there, headed for the lead. That's a great catch there by Carmen Prince. 22 yards to the Auburn 33 as they're moving the football. Now this is third and eight, and Pyburn again throwing for Prince, keeping the drive alive on this third down play. Well, they were running a flood route out there, Phil. We were laying off on the short receiver and coming up and tackling. We made an adjustment on that at the half, but this hurt us right here, too. Georgia's moving the football well. They were a fired-up football team. Now at they the nine-yard line. Carney Norris, a That's freshman. Real good running right there. Real good running and a lot, of, a lot of grabbing in there. Not getting in the middle of them. It's third and three now. Big play coming here. Pyron cannot get his first down. And yeah. so they are faced with a field goal situation. Now watch Auburn jump offside as he kicks the field goal. But it's a half-distance penalty, and it's not quite enough for the first down, and so Vince Dooley elects to take the three points. Well, Phil, that's always a, a tough situation on what to decide there for a coach to take a, a three-pointer or, or go for it and put him in about a foot of the first down. There's no excuse for us being offside on that play. That's one of the cardinal don'ts of the kicking game. And so he takes the uh, points. No more scoring in the first half of play. Georgia takes a one-point lead in at the half. We will return after this word from South Central Bay. The university is concerned about energy conservation as winter applied this past week. He was a chief photographer for the Auburn Football Review since its inception. Uh, he did his celebrate and coach through a lens. He couldn't jump up and down when good things all happened to Auburn, but he was a war eagle out he, there. He, he, he celebrated he was, silently. He was a true one all the way, Phil, and a guy that we'll always remember for not only doing a great job, but just being a great person to, and yeah. enjoyable to be around. And we mentioned it because he had so many Auburn fans having covered so many games over the years, and we'll miss him. We'll move back into the uh, second half of play now by taking a look at the great Auburn band. That's that railroad trestle, and boy, they were crowded in there. They were there yesterday, weren't they? Well, they, they were there Friday, about half of them, Phil, when we came in, and uh, uh, we were able to avoid some of that Saturday, but uh, that's part of the Georgia following, and it's a tradition there, I believe. Our Auburn band was there, and uh, very noticeable to us before, during, and after the game. Uh, that they were really behind us, and uh, we appreciate their support. I sure like the game. Georgia gets the ball in the second half, looks to have something working. Pyburn here hooking up with Lindsey Scott. He's a good one. Lindsey Scott from Jessup, Georgia. A great, uh, great athlete, great receiver. Now, after stopping this uh, Simon for no gain on a running play, watch the Auburn defense. Bob Harris about to go high in the air. Bob Harris, sophomore from... Atlanta, Georgia area. Bob has uh, done a great job for us right around Cedar Grove. And, and he got three turnovers uh, yesterday. Two fumbles, he caught one in the air, and that great interception. Charlie Trotman about to hit uh, Byron Franklin on a clutch third down throw here. Well, they jumped up in their blitz man-to-man, uh, -man, Phil, and, and we ran a single coverage route. And Byron just ran a quick hook and made the first down. Charlie hit him just like he uh, was supposed to. But the drive stalled, and there's Johnston punting again, this time a 49-yarder down to the Georgia 20. Boy, it was a great offensive uh, performance for Skip Johnston. Skip Johnston really did a, did a great job for us. Georgia's coming right out. There's a fumble there. Uh, just, uh, I guess, not concentrating, and uh, Bob Harris was right there going after the ball and picked it off in the air. But a bad exchange from center is going to give them the ball right back as Auburn suffers uh, a turnover. This is the first turnover we had in two ball games, Phil, and it was really, uh, of course, hurt. We felt like we didn't turn that ball over and kept the pressure on them, we'd win the football game. 
The Auburn defense is getting tough now. Pyburn looking for Scott. No good. Good coverage over there by Darrell Wilkes on the sideline. He's getting a little pressure on the passer, getting close to him and forcing him to throw it out there. That was a great tackle by Clifford Tony. On the flood back. We made a little adjustment on that. Coach Sullivan did at halftime. That was a pretty good play out there by Ken Hardy, defensive end from Gulf Breeze, Florida. Ken Hardy's a senior playing good football this year. Now going the other way, watch Charlie Trotman. His passing in the second half loosened them up some too. Coach. Well, he sure did. That was a great pass there. It hit Rusty Bird right in the chest. Rusty bobbled the football. I know he felt bad about it, but they knew we would and we could throw. And this is a play that hurts them the inside veer, triple option. And uh, Brooks turns an ordinary play into a touchdown here by great, great running. There's good blocking downfield and and nobody blocked when they got him out there. He didn't need one then. Watch Trotman keep the ball, run to the corner, and then flip it out late to that speeding bullet down the sideline. Well, right here, they had a chance to get him, and uh, there was a good block by Byron Franklin and a missed tackle there and a cutback on number 19. And that's Picks it. up Rusty Bird downfield, and it looks like uh, it's all over right there. James showed great speed and great cutback ability on that play. Well executed by a quarterback and everybody. After George Portella booms it into the end zone, uh, the uh, Georgia Dogs, still in the football game, though, come out and uh, try to get something going here. But watch, watch him get the ball stripped away here. I think James McKinney may have hit him right there, Coach. Uh, James McKinney. Ken Hardy, I think, was in on the play. And again, Bob Harris covered the football. Bob got uh, all three of those turnovers in the second half. Those were big plays for us, big, big plays. And we were able to take advantage of it. Another big opportunity, Joe Cribbs running inside now, making the great cut to get about four there. Joe didn't have uh, a lot of running room there, but he, but he made his own way. Here's Charlie. He doesn't mind sticking it up in there where it's thick. Third and two at the nine coming up now. Another third down conversion. Auburn didn't have any third down conversions in the first half, and they made just about all of them in the second half. Cribs getting the first at the six. Now it's root them out time. Power eye. Here they come. Big run there to get it down to the one. Joe can jump forward further than anybody I've ever seen. Down there. That was a great surge there. And, uh, of course, uh, he's a guy we like to give it to down there, and he'll just uh, go any way he can to get in the end zone. That, that was a... Big, big play there. As they had Dubose blocking, Joe up and over the top, got both hands on the football, and that's a big touchdown for us right there. Now going for two to stretch that lead to 13. Trotman looking and finding Mark Robbins in the corner of the end zone. Well, we had our uh, option pass or run, a play we run a lot, and then if the corner comes up, we, we pitch the ball, and if we... He comes up, we throw it. If he stays back, we pitch it. Charlie wisely uh, connected with Robbins, and we needed that two points at that stage. So it's 23-10 now. Auburn has a 13-point lead now, and the Auburn defense is getting real salty down here. Well, we're going. getting a little more reckless with our bodies down there. We, we didn't mind. Uh, look at that. We're getting some pass rush. We missed him, but there's some pressure. Here comes Marvin Williams. And pressure on almost an interception by Harris Rayburn. So the dogs can't move down deep. They're going to have to punt it out. And Auburn takes over. Here's Joe Cribbs. Oh, look at that. I'll tell you, Joe can get through a little, little crack. Uh, one of the finest, uh, I think, backs to ever play at, uh, at Auburn. He's not an All-American. There's a little, I, I believe he is, too. Uh, there's a little pass we tried to complete the first half and misfired twice and made 11 yards on it. Hey, this is a clutch play, too. A clutch field goal by George Patella. I mean, we needed that uh, at that stage, and he just thumped it right through there. So Auburn jumps up 26 to 10 in the third quarter. 16-point lead now, but uh, it's still a football game, and everybody knows it. The Auburn defense has Georgia bottled up again, but an interference call gives Georgia first down, even though it was third and 28, and so they actually move the chains back but get a first down out of it. Hybrid throwing. That blocker and get on back there and rush that passer. We gave him too much time and missed it. You'll miss that guy right there. Stay. He's, he's a great athlete. We've got to put more pressure on the passer than that. Now on third down, big play here. Pyburn There's running a for rush his life. By Zach Hardy from uh, Hewittown. Zach's putting the pressure on him. Causes a bad throw there. Pushed him out of pocket. Now Rex Robinson hits a 49 yard field goal. The 
fans booed at 16 behind, but coach, I thought about 17, 16. They had to score three right. times, and they got to get something on the board. That was an excellent call by, by Coach Dooley, and that was a percentage thing to do. They had to score two touchdowns. And here's one of the biggest plays in the game. Now, that's big Keith Euchre from Hollywood, Florida down there, and I saw his folks there yesterday, and I know they were awfully proud of him because he jumped up there and caught that ball, and wisely got on the ground and curled up around the football, and that's uh, exactly what he needed to do. That was a big, big play for us. And Auburn is not going to mess around. Momentum, pickle it's, as she uh, is. George Peoples, again. that's right. George Peoples from Tampa, Florida, running the football. George is going to be a fine back. And none other than uh, Mr. Cribbs is taking some punishment there. Third and two now, power eye coming. Watch, they expect Auburn to run inside on third and two, and they don't. They fake it inside, and watch they this. They fake it. Charlie really makes that play. He takes it to the corner perfectly. Uh, you know, from where we were, I thought he might have been out of bounds, but it really wasn't that close over there. But uh, really, Joe uh, makes a great block. Charlie takes it and freezes uh, that corner right there, and a great pitch. And then he runs away from this guy. Just yeah, he just, just outran him right there. Uh, speed, he, he made a grab for him, and James kind of coasted in. I think that kind of put the, put the game away there. And we, we caught him, of course, playing in inside defense there and I guess some of their folks are leaving early but our people didn't want to leave one and two there <laughs> well that's uh, that's two that's a great pair right there I'll tell you that <laughs> Frank's got him a new hairdo he's wearing him some of that hedge and uh, here's a celebration on the sidelines as the well, Auburn Tigers win a big one right there it was a great victory for Auburn and all of our followers and, and all of our people and a great uh, effort by a fine group of young men that uh, we're all proud of it. We went there, and I'd go anywhere with them, and I hope they're not through yet. <laughs> yeah, it's quite a celebration going on down there. There's we had a, an interception uh, late in the game by Johnny Cheeks, who's from Gainesville, Georgia, a freshman that, uh, of course, they didn't want over there, and uh, Johnny came in late and intercepted the ball, made a good return on it. We weren't able to get that on film, but he was really tickled to death, too, uh, being a Georgia boy. I bet. Great day it was. We'll return in a moment following this from my sponsor. You know, you've had a record number of uh, potential uh, student athletes at Auburn come to the campus on visits this year. I wonder if you'd tell the Auburn fans just the routine they go through when they come to see you. Well, I'd certainly like to, Phil. Uh, of course, recruiting is the lifeblood of any uh, football program. We have a great tradition at Auburn to sell. Now, these are some of the things that we show them. The Outland Award, the Jacobs Blocking Trophy, the Heisman Trophy. Uh, we, we're one of the few schools that, that has players that have won all those awards, from Pat Sullivan to Ken Rice, right on down the line. We show them our... Zeke Smith. Zeke Smith. Don't forget Zeke. <laughs> our training facilities, our weight room, and we wanted our athletes uh, work hard. Uh, we feel like you've got to do that to, to win now. Uh, our relaxing facilities at our dormitory, our, our lounge, our, our lobby there, our study rooms, or players can enjoy a fellowship and, sure, and relaxation. Lady, eh? I happen to think that was my daughter. It I'm was. not sure, but uh, then, of course, we have a little uh, game room that uh, they can enjoy playing. We think that Ms. Ann Graves and her fine staff of cooks, dietitians there uh, feed uh, as well as anybody in the country. We certainly try to show them that part of our campus and our program, and that's our fine trainer, Herb Waldup there, who I think does a tremendous job of taking care of our athletes. This is one of our, our new parts of our complex, the bubble, where we can practice inside on AstroTurf. Of course, we're very proud of our stadium and, and the enlargement plan, the, the renovation. Uh, they're really going along full swing there. We're going to have 72,000 plus seats and uh, lights, so uh, we have some great teams coming in there in the near future, Schedule starting for next, completion year next year. Next year, uh, Tennessee comes in, and of course, then we have Nebraska, and uh, later on, uh, Penn State, Maryland, LSU. So uh, we've got to have some good football players to, to put in there. It's going to be an impressive uh, state on campus stadium. I think our press has endured with us this year, as you can see in some of these situation, but hopefully next year that all that will be uh, new and, and we'll all appreciate it. So really I think everybody has great uh, facilities, but the thing that makes a difference I think are the people, and that's one thing that we feel like we have to sell at Auburn. Well, it's 8-2, and two, Coach. There's one left on the schedule. 
And it's a big one, Phil. Uh, of course, the best team in the country. Uh, Alabama, I think the greatest coach in the nation, and I sincerely mean that. Uh, it's quite a challenge, quite an honor, and every coach says that it's, that's, that's going to play them, but they've got a great defense. They run their wishbone to perfection, and uh, it'll just be one of the toughest challenges we've ever had at Auburn, I think. I don't think you can get a ticket. It's going to be a tough ticket, Legion Field, on December 1st, but we'll have the replay the next day. Welcome to the Auburn Football Review. Yesterday, before a jam-packed uh, house at Legion Field, the Auburn second-half rally fell one touchdown short. Uh, Alabama won 25-18, but it was a battle, Coach. Well, it was a great football game, Phil. I, I'm just tremendously proud of our people for the great effort they gave. Uh, we're never proud of losing, and uh, they know that, uh, but I'm proud of our people, for our coaching staff and our players for putting a lot into it, and they believe they could win up until the last few seconds. Uh, I felt that way, too. It was a great uh, effort, a great game, a great crowd, uh, and a tremendous uh, crowd. You know, it's, it's tough for us to go into uh, Legion Field. always seems like it's a little pro-Alabama to me and uh, to our people, but uh, we responded with a, with a great effort. And it fell a little bit short against a fine football team. And I'd like to compliment uh, Alabama, uh, their people, and their team. They, they have a fine team, and uh, they're deserving champions, and certainly they'll, they'll represent our conference well. And I'm just sorry that our football team... Uh, bands masked for the pregame. Uh, the ticket was about $100 to the scalpers, Coach. So an idea that the, the series is really uh, uh, competitive now and people are really loving to get in there. And see I it. certainly hope so, Phil. And, of course, uh, all, of our, all of our people uh, were asking for tickets. Uh, they was all been retired. <laughs> <laughs> This uh, Brian had on, I guess, but uh, it was it was a great day for football. A tremendous uh, situation setting. And you're going to see as we open uh, the uh, game, uh, really a freak play on the kickoff. Watch the ball now; it goes well, high in the air. We didn't handle this too well, Phil. And, uh, we should have called for a fair catch right there for sure. And thing hopped around, and uh, James bobbled it, and Alabama got it. And it's put a, a lot of pressure on our defense here right to begin with. They break the bone on the first play. Well, they're going with a sweep out there, and we we played it out there pretty well. Uh, Frank Warren uh, Edmund strung Nelson. it out there, and Edmund Nelson uh, made a good tackle. I think that was a nose guard. Here comes Chile on the option. He's wrapped up in a, in a sea of blue there. Freddie Smith, uh, Zach Hardy, I believe. And Ken Hardy. And Ken Hardy. Third down, 10 now. There's uh, Frank Warren putting rush on the passer. Good pressure. But we had to have Zach Carter. So it's back uh, far enough for them not to feel like they can kick the field goal. And um, Umphrey is trying to angle for the corner, it would appear, but kicks it into the end zone. And so the turnover at the 20 does not hurt. And Auburn's defense holds. Two exchange later now. Alan McElroy has missed a 30 yard field goal. Auburn couldn't move on the first possession. Here comes James Brooks for four yards on first down. I'll tell you, Alabama uh, had great quickness on defense, and they're tough. And Gave us a lot of looks and a lot of pictures. There's Joe Cribbs just powering, uh, being his own blocker for about three yards there in the first down. We had a good drive going here. Uh, Charlie, this is a, a third check down play. off. Right. They uh, they bring their uh, weak corner in a blitz, and Charlie just recognized it, and we worked on this all week. That was a great run right there by number 20 from Sullivan. They had the angle on him there, and there's a little piling on out of bounds, and uh, fortunately, it was called. Here's the replay, and watch him break clean. Good Just blocking. Good dive play, and good blocking at the point of attack. Joe breaks the tackle. It comes there, find uh, linebacker Thomas Boyd, and he couldn't quite get him, and there's safety. I think corners in. Mm hmm. <laughs> and so, and the 15 yard penalty tax on brings it to the 12 yard line now. Auburn in the power eye, Ed DuBose can't get going there. Oh, we had a quick trap going there, and I don't know uh, what happened there. We didn't get a didn't get a crease. We ran in a blocker. Second and 11. And uh, the inside veer there, and I think they gave us a little misread there. Charlie uh, kept the ball. We're trying to 
would dump the ball here to uh, Joe Cribbs. And this was said the ball went beyond the line of scrimmage. So I think he was right, too. But we had to go for the field goal. And this, we just didn't do a good job of getting that ball in the end zone, but Patella uh, did get us on the board. They were fortunate there to get out front, uh, three to nothing. That was a 47-yarder for George Patello. After the kickoff, Don Jacobs is the tied quarterback now. They start to mix the pass with a run, throwing the out to uh, Pugh, Keith Pugh, the receiver. Keith Pugh, I believe, uh, from Evergreen. And uh, they, they, we gave them this some, or forced them to throw it. We hope they didn't complete it that much. Uh, Jacob was having a little trouble there moving, and they run an option. He gets caught from behind, I, I believe. He left the game after that turned play. His, turned his knee there. Four plays later, Alabama goes for it on fourth and one, and they get to the Auburn 40 for a first down. Now we're two plays later. Stedman Sheely throwing again to Pew. Well, we had about uh, three people uh, on the Alabama team jumped in. I don't know whether you noticed it there. They're tied in, their left tackle in, their tailback, and... Uh, and not a soul saw it, but that's on the sideline. That was a little strange. Now, going the other way, after the 7-3 score in the second quarter, Auburn's James Brooks running the left side for six, second and four at the 22. They really hurt in those big situations, too, don't they, Cody? Yes, they do. It doesn't take the one play. That's fine running by, by James on the corner out there. Fine running. Now. Good blocking. We're four plays later now. Here goes J uh, James uh, Joe Cribbs Joe up inside. Cribbs. 15 uh, got a lot of shots in there. I noticed that when folks were on the ground. That's good running by Joe. We come with a, what we call a roll pass here, and uh, Charlie gets to the sideline. I believe he makes the first down, wisely gets out of bounds. That was a big play, third and six. Now it's third and seven on this play, trying to get the first down, but James can't quite get outside the uh, containment there. And so the drive is stalled. That's a good play by the Alabama defense out there. Good reaction on the corner and a good tackle out there on, on a good back to stop it. 52-yard field goal by Portella is uh, short, just short. First and 10 now, Alabama headed goal with Sheedley throwing again to Pew to the Auburn 39. Now at the 15-yard line as the drive continues, Sheedley cuts behind and gets four down to about the 11-yard line. That's a loaded option there. And, uh, doing a good job of uh, blocking and executing. This is Whitman, their pullback Whitman, down to the five. Strong runner, tackle there by Marvin Williams up inside, but we're kind of grabbing and hanging on there instead of getting in the middle of folks. Sheely fakes inside and then follows his blockers into the end zone for the touchdown. So Alabama goes up 14 to three with two minutes remaining in the half. That's the way the half ended, uh, two quarters of play. It's a 14-3 game. One of the most exciting second half is Halfs you're ever to see is coming up, and we'll see that in just a moment now. This word from our sponsor. We'll get a position for field goal. 23-yard attempt. Thank you, Alan McElroy. Finally make one. Alan McElroy, senior from Tuscaloosa, made the field goal with 2.07 left. Alan kicked off. We were trying to kick over in the corner to get away from him. Tell you, that was pretty good doing there with somebody. I don't know who it was. Kenny Simon. Kenny Simon. Kenny is a freshman from Montgomery. He leads our team in kickoff returns. That's Brian Bragg from Montgomery also in on the tackle. Or made the tackle. Brian was injured early. Well, he had surgery this summer. Jeremiah Castillo on the coverage. Castillo saved one touchdown. Yes, he's a good football player. He has tremendous speed. Didn't play him enough, really. He rested Mac Neal more. Will Cox. Thomas slipped then, just as he was catching the football, and they came up with it. So we gave it back to him again. First down. Warren Lyles, the bottom man on the tackle. Warren Lyles, uh, I think all our people play well. As well as it could. Somebody got their hands up then. Brian Braggs. Brian Bragg hit the ball. Had a big play. Back to the unexpected. Third and nine. Here's a big one, too, on third and nine. Now, he was out in the flat there. We had a couple of men just standing. They should have been out there around him. Never let him got that, caught that ball. Big play for Auburn. Real fine play by the quarterback. 
They're going for two, the right end move. They try to throw back here and it's intercepted by Mike Clement. Getting, uh, Johnny Cheech. And uh, we we came out uh, playing with a little more intensity here and uh, they struck a few blows and, and they left the ball on the ground a couple of times. I believe that was covered by Edmund Nelson there. Right here, uh, I, I don't think we did a good job as uh, as coaches here, and I'm including myself uh, in, in getting taking advantage of this right here. We were going to try a new formation, and uh, we should have done it uh, with a huddle instead of uh, without a huddle. And I felt like that I made a mistake there, and, and uh, we did. But uh, anyhow, we, we didn't we didn't get it done. There's fine running there by James, and uh, we get a we get a penalty there, and put us back 15 yards, and we were forced to, to punt that football. And we're trying to kick it out of bounds. I should have done this once earlier rather than trying to field goal, but but we didn't. So I said, maybe we can pin them up down there, but we didn't do that. So uh, going the other way now, second down at seven, Alabama's second play of this series. Ogilvy gets five. Edmund Nelson knocks it away this time, and Freddie Smith gets the ball back for Auburn. That was a good uh, hard lick there, fine tackle, and uh, an excellent alertness there. So we get it right back, and we have another opportunity here. First play goes to Joe Cribbs. Inside, gets about three. Down to the 25-yard line. Second and seven at this point. Cribbs again. That is good hard running. Man. Real, real hard running by Joe inside. We're close to popping that crease there that we didn't quite get. Third and four. Going and a great play here, or it would have been a touchdown. Well, we had that play there, and uh, our receiver, Rusty Bird, uh, was there. But he should have motored it down a little bit and, and stayed in the void rather than running deep. But nevertheless, it was a good play by them. And we go for the field goal and get it. We only came out there with three points, but that's better than none. 14 to 6 is the score now. And this is Sheely on the move on the next possession. Seven minutes remaining in the uh, quarter now. Well, we let him out of the hole there. And that was a good play by Sheely. Excellent, excellent play. And they come rolling down the field. Looks like they're going to run out of the out of the stadium you know, we're doing some grabbing and we just relaxed here at this point we're back in the ball game first and ten at the 22 throwing the quick out to uh, pew again he stopped down there at the 12 yard line so it's first and ten now sheely with the ball there's a fumble and some auburn player gets in there and gets it, it out tony. i'm not sure harris uh, raven, tony or raven had the ball uh, maybe harris raven a fine linebacker from uh, andalusia but after one play, they're going to get the ball back here on another turnover. Well, I, we, we had a little missed assignment there. It looked like we had an excellent play there and a good read. And uh, we, we didn't get uh, the play, uh, the blocking done like we needed to. Now at the Auburn 11 yard line, Sheely gets only a yard. Dan Dickerson puts the hit on him. That's the way it should be right there. We should get more folks around that football. Second and nine at the 10. Pitches to Ogilvy. Bob Harris in there to stop him. A little him. reckless there and a little aggressive. Play. That's encouraging. That's what we needed to do. Third and nine. Whitman, the big fullback inside, stopped short of the first down. So on fourth down and four, Alan McElroy comes in and hits a 23-yard field goal, making the score 17 to 6. There's 3-0-4 left in the third quarter. And things are about to start happening for the Auburn Tigers. After the kickoff, Auburn going to the air now. Looks like he was setting up deeper in, uh, along the Well, we, we were setting up uh, off of play action draw fake and giving us excellent protection. That was really the best protection that we had. We didn't have much here, and uh, we almost uh, make a great catch there, and the 15 kind of hanging on our arm. But uh, anyhow, we, we were changing our plan a little bit, going our alternate plan there, Skip kicking away from the safety, and Dan Dickerson from Woodlawn High School in Birmingham was down excellent coverage, and they dropped it on the on the turf and we covered it. So we're in a great position here. Now at the 36-yard line on the turnover. Trotman pass is tipped up. Watch try to get in there and bat it down to keep it from oh, being intercepted. Be sure that that's a, a big tackle there, about 6'5, I think. Here's a great play by Charlie Trotman. A good block by James on the blitz, and we had the perfect thing call, a delay, and Joe got out there and got open. And that's that's really fine running to avoid a couple of tackles. And, and get in the end zone. Charlie Trotman made that 
This is a safety blitz play. coming here? Yeah, it's a strong safety blitz, and they're bringing Look. in both. And Charlie gave ground wisely, and this was a delay against the green. And then a great cut right there. That's a great cut. Both down there trying to block, and that's a big play for us. So it's 17 to 12 on the touchdown, going for two, which will get it within field goal range. Uh, and the throwback doesn't work. Auburn moved on the play and drew the uh, penalty anyway. Well, we had trouble, I think, the noise down there here, and there's no reason to make an excuse, but uh, that's, that's what one of the players said. But regardless, that's what happens. Opening the fourth quarter, Alabama can't move. Ferguson stopped in there by Dennis Rogers. Second and nine. Watch the freshman Donnie Humphrey get to him there. That was a great play, but Donnie Humphrey up in Huntsville. Donnie the freshman is going to be a fine football player. Humphrey has to punt out. Now it's going the other way, and this is third down and 12. Trotman looking long for Byron Franklin. Well, I didn't realize that was third down play, but we called the takeoff off of the curl route. And Byron gave him a good wrinkle, got behind him, and saved a save touchdown. First down at the 14 now. Cribs inside, fighting for yardage. That's good, tough running in there against a, a tough defense. One play later. Charlie looking in the end zone. We had great Drills protection, and uh, Mark Robbins, instead of running the out, ran the curl. We call a curl, and uh, I think that caught him a little bit. Great protection by our offensive line and, and backs there, and Mark's wide open. And I think he wisely just cradled that ball in there. It was a great, uh, great throw by Charlie Trotman and great reception. 18-13 now. Auburn is in the lead. 11-30 remaining well, in the 18. game. 17. I mean, we, 17. We needed it. Right there was a play that uh, we needed uh, something to really happen for us. So, uh, that, you know, every play is a big play. Man. And we, we caused a fumble and bounced on the turf and bounced right up far. And then they come right back and, and really hurt us. Uh, I mean, they play. I think if we'd gotten the ball there, uh, the game might have been over. First down at the 46 but, uh, now. Look, there's still some good hard uh, licks being struck in there. Our defense is. It's hanging in there. I don't know whether we play with as much intensity here. We've got to give uh, Alabama a lot of credit. Uh, right there, uh, we, we draw a penalty, and I think our guys are really trying to trying to stop him uh, from going out of bounds and keep him from getting hurt. 15-yard penalty, and then this play, they just roaring right down the field. First and goal on uh, this play now. Sheely is going to run the option play and get it in for the touchdown, the go-ahead touchdown. They go for two and puts Alabama ahead by seven. And the score is now 25-18 uh, on well, the two-point play. Well, that's what you, what you needed to do. We went to sleep in there on, the, uh, on that play, but uh, they were seven points ahead. And Here forced, comes the kickoff. Force us to go for uh, two to win. This play here, I held my breath, Phil. I know James probably when he sees it right here will Say, well, maybe I shouldn't have cut back there. But, I, you know, a runner, you can't uh, second-guess a runner for doing something like that. Uh, Johnny Cheeks thought he could get the ball and run on in the end zone. Uh, we had that happen against us at Wake Forest, so I guess we thought we'd try it. But we had an opportunity right here, and uh, they played excellent defense here, I think, uh, to hold. In fact, I know they did, but uh, we, we had an opportunity to get it in there. That's good. Hard running, good tough tackling. This is a play that hurt us right here. We allowed penetration inside. Uh, we would have had. We felt like we had two downs to make it. Fourth and two, going for it on fourth down. Watch. And the same token there. We just blocked 94. I think and given Charlie long enough. Uh, or we'd have made that catch. You know, it, it's right there with one play uh, to win or lose a ball game. And I know our guys feel terrible. But uh, they still, they did a great job, and they fought uh, right on that. Joe came, uh, this was an excellent return here. Back to us. midfield, good return. Third and 10 on uh, the uh, series now. Trotman on third down and 10, dumping it off to Joe Cribbs. Well, this little wrinkle here we put in there, and he makes a couple of excellent moves there. And, uh, gets the first down. Full 15 in there again, isn't it? <laughs> he was uh, he was around a lot. Now going for it from the 37-yard line. Overthrown there. 
Well, that Third was, and uh, ten. Byron Franklin going to the post. We thought we, we had something there and uh, didn't quite uh, make connections. Now, this was the play that we'd scored on. Of course, they did a good job recognizing that and uh, sensing that play out. Last chance, fourth and ten now. Going to Rusty Bird. He slips down on the cut. And so he Alabama well has covered, stopped the drive. Man. He was well covered. There's Judy Martin, you see, one of our fans. He looked a little unhappy there, as we all are. Uh, at this time, but it was a it was a good tough football game, hard fought against uh, I think two fine teams. And, uh, certainly, our guys are right up there with uh, with any of them. And congratulations, go to Victor. But I'm very proud of our our football team and our fans. I want to say this about our alumni: we've got a great group, and I'm just proud of them for hanging with us and supporting us uh, all year. And uh, they promise to be better as we go. All right, we'll be back in just a moment. I know uh, those 17 seniors, Coach, are a little bit down today, but I think once uh, they get over the initial uh, being down, they'll realize that they've contributed a great uh, deal to Auburn football these four years. Phil, I, I told all of them after the game, and I, I'm sincere about this, and I want to say it again uh, publicly, that I'm very proud of uh, every one of those guys. They came uh, when the program was down, and they fought through some hard times and some difficult circumstances, to say the least. They've proven themselves. They're winners. They, they've gotten us back on the right track. Uh, Auburn's back. Of course, you've got to continue to prove it all the time. But, but I'm just proud of each and every one of them. And Let's I look at some of them. 